Hey guys, before we start the episode, which is guaranteed to be an incomprehensibly good episode, <laughs> I want to remind you guys to subscribe uh, to the podcast. Subscribe, make sure you're liking, commenting. Oh, hey, just as we saying, like we, the, the, the pod is becoming really a movement right now, man. It's and for the kids. Like, it, it, it's for the kids. It's for the adults. It's for the young teenagers, whoever we. I saw bro gave you a sweatshirt. I mean, it's been wild, man. Bro, they a custom made sweatshirt. I can't walk around a Sixers game without seeing subscribes. You all signed over the a place. Pat Bev jersey. I'm signing jersey. A guy wore your jersey to the game. It's absolutely the, the what's happening right now is an absolute movement. Make sure that you're a part of the movement. You, and if you're not subscribed, just do it. I mean, fucking subscribe. It, and the kids that's watching freaking subscribe. That's right. Yeah. Now let's get to an absolute classic episode. Hey, how we get that back? What we gotta do? How we that, get that, that million bag? dollars worth of game bag, bag. the double That's what double. I'm talking about. Nah, nah, the one that, I'm, 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 I'm the want the truth. Or do y'all want me to sugarcoat? I want both. This is a little dark room you got to go in, right? Wallow one in there. No, no, no. no. I ain't going to room, Pat. No. Pat, you That's what Cat Williams was talking about. I ain't going to room, Pat. No. I ain't going to room, Pat. That means that I. No. Pat. So before before we when we usually have guests we uh we do freestyle, but so since y'all here my man definitely you know I know just just a light intro because you know yeah. I had to no, give you guys your respect. You still got your speaker. You might be resting. Mm, From be MWOG, a couple of OGs. Mm. This a uh, low profile, low profile. So let's keep it low key. Mm. From the booth to the court. Ooh. There are a couple of killers. Mm. I'm talking about Kendall Gill, Gill Arenas, Chauncey Gillow. Uh, I like that, but don't, listen, don't put that Kendall Gill on me. <laughs> uh, Grant Gill. Charlie Gill in the waiver. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You better Did? get down on the ground uh. when you see him in the city. Uh. It's the hottest out of Philly for a million dollars worth of game. It's Wallow and it's Gilly. Uh. Welcome to the show. Uh. Welcome to the show. You ain't say that, you ain't say like, like, I said a low profile, low profile. Who pulled this in? Somebody like Sean Kemp? Ray Allen. No. I know. I was about to ask you about your time. Stanley in Roberts. <laughs> Stanley, I'm talking about my game. Like, Stanley man. from the office. <laughs> Dennis Rodman. I had that. Yeah, somebody had to set screen. Somebody had to get rebound. Hey, right? You I ain't wrong. Penn State in 92. I re- hey, and then yes. Simon Gratz. I'm familiar yes. with your well, game. He gave, he gave you the low pro, but low key. You, <laughs> hey, feel? you, you got to mention me with some of the greats. I had, you, know. you were Simon Gratz. You, you and Rasheed Wallace are my two Simon Gratz people. guys. A lot of people said I was like. Kevin Johnson to play, you know, played for the Suns back in the day. You know, I had a game like that. Point guard? Yeah, a little mix up. Nobody uh, never said that. I ain't do is be hating on my game, you know. I got a classic antique game. It's antique, yeah. yeah. It's a throwback. You gotta put clips. We gotta see clips of that though. Oh yeah, yeah. Of clips game? Of, yeah. yeah. You seen clips? Because we've seen game. clips of your game no, a lot. I've seen clips of my game. I cook. Yeah. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, you do. I cook. Yeah, you do. I ain't gonna lie. You big. No, and, but see, and I watch that. it like I ain't the type of motherfucker. Just watch it. I watch it. I watch it again. I hold. On, let me let me watch it again. It's my, yeah, he got but he you got a little. Check him on this. Pack. He got a little rousing dousing on him. You yeah. got check him on. And he left handed, so you you can't tr- trust him. Up he keeps yeah. saying <laughs> that he shoots better than seventy percent of the players in the NBA. Could you check him on that? I mean, you can't like every man is entitled to his own. You feel me? Okay, what I'm saying is you can't. You're not shooting the same range. Most of the NBA. A lot of the NBA is fours and fives, too. Threes, fours, and fives. A lot of the ones and the twos might get me. I'm going to even get some of them. But Ooh. the threes, the fours, and the fives. You believe that, man? No, I mean, it's going to be hard because he got a guard. We No, I'm just talking guard. about shooting. If we went to a gym and was oh, okay, shooting. okay. You see, okay, it's a different game. All-Star weekend, racks, like five spots. I guarantee you, I would bet my life to a suitcase full of shit <laughs> that if they put me in the NBA three-point contest, I would not come in last. I would bet my life to a suitcase full of shit, bro that I won't come in last. I'm going to beat somebody. I feel like we could set this up, though. I feel like it's not that hard to put out. You ain't wrong, racks. neither. Fuck niggas. You ain't wrong. <laughs> I'm not coming in last. You ain't wrong. You ain't I'm going to be knocking that shit down. Of eight of the best shooters in the league? 
a lot of times they don't be the best shooters in the league. They will have a tall white in there just to sprinkle it. <laughs> They'll just have no, a And a lot of tall. times, too, you got to understand, too, a lot of times, a lot of players shoot better when it's competition going on. You mm. know that, Pat. Yeah. But you, oh, let's get all the light on you now. You just got to shoot. Yeah. Shit. I have nothing to lose. My shit going to be silky. I'll be talking <laughs> shit as I want you. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. That's how it is, too. Like, I ain't lost a shooting match against Tobias ever. Really? Ever. Would mm. Tobias say that? Yeah. Really? Yeah, for sure. Ever. In, in different places, like in Chicago, in fit, like, you feel me? Big game, a big game player. You no, it ain't just about that. I'm, man, that broke ass, I'm right there on your ear. Like, I'm right, man, I'm right there on your ear. Thank you. I'm on your ear. That's oh, he's scared. Do. Oh, I ran off. I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm really talking myself into win, low key. But people be sleep on that. That's why you fit in in Philly. Yeah. I, I feel like right. that, that's why it makes gonna sense. Talk, we going to talk ourselves into a win. <laughs> Straight up. You feel what Straight I'm up. saying? Straight what, up. What was I doing? When me and Lethal Shooter was going at it. You was talking to me, See, you ain't used to a nigga in your head like right, that. Right, 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 that's right. That's my whole right. thing. Look at you. That's three in a row. You Lethal Shooter. <laughs> now he's now he thinking. Right. Man, you got to think. Right. right. <laughs> Clank. Right. <laughs> Clank. He was still yeah. him down. Yeah. He was, but you but was on him. I'm on him. He was arguing back and forth. I'm that right. ain't his game. Because, especially <laughs> if that's not your game. I'm saying Now myself. I got you thinking about something totally right, different. Right, right. You know, if you not if you know as a person that just I just play the game, I don't really talk shit like that. And now I'm just talking shit the whole time you shoot, you like chill out, dog. Let me shoot. No, I ain't <laughs> no, it's not how the game go be. It's psychological. There's, yeah, a, lot, there's a big psychological. Yeah. I feel like that's a big part of your game, the psychological. Yeah. No, I don't know. I just play my game. People get mad at me. I can't help with that. You feel me? I just I, I carry myself like this though. Well, I say that because I listened to your guy's uh interview with Tyrese Maxey last yeah, week. Mm -hmm. And he told a story on your guy's show that you never even brought up on, on this show mm -hmm. that after the Christmas Day loss to the <laughs> Heat, you were yeah. you were basically like, everybody's gonna pat you on the back. That's not me. Yeah. Uh, and you never you never said that story, never, and ever. I think it gives way more weight to that story that you're that he's the one that told that, and that's the, how that uh, information came out. No, you know we getting blasted. We playing heat. We getting blasted. Not just blasted, but like you feel me? Like ain't a lot of juice. So you know everybody's like, yeah, we just missing shots, and I'm like, yeah, but fuck that, we pros. What you mean? Like ain't no such thing. Like we gotta be prepared for anything. That's what being a professional is, especially on the basketball court. So everybody leaving shit. You know, man, come on, you gonna knock him down? You gonna nah, fuck that, man. Maybe you can't do it without Joe. He what? Mm. Wow. Maybe you can't. I ain't the type of film and let you, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I ain't here for a check. I'm here for your legacy only. My young guys have legacy. Shea Gilders Alexander, uh, Anthony Edwards. A lady talking about legacy. I don't fuck around. I ain't here trying to, like, Shea mom walked up to me in Toronto. Like, thank you for helping my son. You feel me? These are stories I would never tell. You know what I'm saying? But, like, when people can actually like repeat them, but I don't play. I don't play by my young guys. I want them to get everything they deserve in life, bro. That's psychology, though. That's mm. that kind of reverse yeah. psychology. Light the light the fuse underneath somebody. Be like, hey, maybe you're not good enough. Yeah. Turn them up. Forty next game. Thirty some next game. Turn them up. What? Turn them up. I'm not here for next check. I'm here. Tyrese Max to go down in legacy, bro. Like, what's your legacy like? That's it. And Reese, I tell you, even at, after every year in the off season. I get on the phone and tell him what he do good and what he do bad. That's cool. Real talk. Yeah. Last year, off season, I said, bro, you got to start shooting more mid-range jump shots. Either it's a three-pointer or it's a layup. Oh, yeah, wow. I said, you shoot 85% from the foul line. Start making them guard the whole floor. I got you, OG. Mm. I feel like you have that relationship with a lot of young Philly athletes. I feel like I've heard you- Because when you know what you are talking about, yeah. it's like, okay, I can be acceptive to this. Yeah. If a motherfucker telling you some shit, you're like, man, what the fuck is he talking right. about, man? Because didn't you tell Jalen Hurst that he needs to throw with more anticipation two off seasons ago or something yes. like that? Yeah, absolutely. I say, you waiting for the wide receivers to get open. This is the NFL. You have to throw them open. And then he came back and he was throwing them open. But that's a part of growth, and that's a part of accountability. See, when you in the league, everybody go, man, don't worry about it. Good no. job, man. Did, 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 did. No, fuck that, man. You got to go off, man, when big fella ain't here, man. Everybody going to tell you that shit cool you was off, man. We can't afford for you to be off, man. 
That's just it's that's good. Want to be great. It's Some good. of the realest shit you can yeah. tell me. I want to be it's great. Good, Pat, coming like that because that's that old school teaching. Because I think we live in a world now where everybody is so sensitive and so soft, and just a lot of dudes are scared of the young cats today. And it's like that's how it always been. You always had the hard old heads growing up at a certain era. Dudes to tell you, no, it ain't. I mean, so for you to be that dude in the locker room, that's major. More no. dudes need to step up and tell dudes, listen, man, all this Hollywood shit you got going on, no. that shit don't mean nothing, baby. No. When we get on that court, we got to, there's only one trophy. No. Ain't no six, the sixth person, the fifth person, the twelfth person. This ain't this kid shit. You know, they give everybody a trophy now. No. Oh, participating trophy. Everybody standing there getting the trophy at the end. They fucking the kids up, if you ask me. Yeah. Everybody get a trophy now? No. That right. Because, you know, you know we want all the kids to feel, the, no, let them feel the ain't pain no of losing. Place, right? yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with losing. That's going to help him get his game together. And quicker, too. Yeah. Right. And it's going to last longer. That's right. The, that's the, like, that's the, the effects you get from that. Right. Yeah. Because you'll have a motherfucker telling a story. He in the pros now. He like, well, what really pushed you when right. you was younger? Right. Man. I was on his team, man. We never won, man. I used to see them niggas <laughs> getting them up. trophies, man. Straight up. I used to see them niggas getting them trophies, Girl, man. Get I wanted the trophy from... so bad, Damn man. God. Yeah, man. I wanted the trophy bad as shit, man. So I just kept going to the gym, man, and just, then I just ended up here. That's it. Where them niggas that got them trophies at? Oh, there ain't none of them in the league. Yeah. Nope. Nah, they, so th now you get, they got loser trophies. The tenth place loser, seventh place. The color yellow. <laughs> hey, damn, what the fuck is that? Like, why is we? Why is we here? No, we don't want to mess with the kids' morale. Fuck the kids' morale. You need to know the difference between winning and losing. Second place is the first loser. Even Ricky Bobby told you. Yeah. He did. Shit. He did. What's going on? If you ain't a winner, you a loser. Yeah. <laughs> you think I'd be happy if they gave us some goddamn rings for the Super Bowl last year? Who the second place rings? Man, you niggas <laughs> pulling them bitches. Yeah. We don't yeah. want them rings. We want that trophy. Yeah. You feel what I'm so? Only person that gets to win every year is Wallow, really. Cause oh, <laughs> yeah, because he's going to switch up. See my Ravens. Yeah. He's a loser. <laughs> <laughs> he picks his team when? Mean, Playoffs? See my, or like the uh, right no, before the switch no, every no, week. No, I only pick I only pick basketball. Like I don't I don't keep up with basketball. Right. Because ever since I met ACL, got messed up back in the day. <laughs> back in state? Yeah, Penn State. And all of this so, is bullshit, too, Pat. Because you sit there is. like you intrigued, like he telling the yeah, truth. Yeah, he, I, I, I figured he would to come here and lie. The whole thing I, is, I, the whole thing I, is I, basketball got too many games for me to watch. Hey, now, I checked it. I go right to Google, and I just put, you know what I mean, the league. Who is the best for it? And, and once finals come, and I, it, it's going close to the finals, the playoffs, I see who looking good about game by the round game three. Whoever looking the best, that's my squad. I'm rocking with them. <laughs> I'm not playing no games. I ain't got time to. Be but what about when someone blows a three nothing lead or something like that? You oh, know what I mean? Then you wind up looking. Listen, one thing about me, I keep a backup jersey. <laughs> I'm going to that celebration. I don't give a fuck what nobody talking about. I'm celebrating. Hey, yeah, I'm not. I don't understand. I think it's some loser shit. To be holding on for a team for years. Oh, uh, what the fuck is you holding on to a team for years? Bro? That's loser shit. Oh, oh, we gonna do it next year. You argue with a motherfucker. Oh, fuck you, like him throwing shit at the TV. Oh, next year, next year. Listen, Eagles. I'm from Philly. I was at the last parade. That was a long time ago. I'm not gonna keep fucking with you. Ever since then, I've been at the. He was with me down Tampa Bay. I was in the Tampa Bay parade. No, that's fucked up. That's fucked Rams. up. Tampa Bay's our rival. Rams are our rival. No, that's not your rival. My <laughs> rival is the team that I'm on when they win. That's not my team. The Eagles is not my team no more, bro. That's no, over. bro, it's not even over yet. It's, it's not then, even then, over. Then I made a commitment a couple games back. I said, you know what? I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to be an Eagles fan. I get on the Eagles fan. I say, I'm an Eagles. I, I begged Philadelphia, let me be Eagles fan. They, they gave me a hard time, whatever. And then they lose two games and said it was because of me. Yeah, it was. You get to get the fuck I, out. All right, bye. <laughs> bye. Baltimore right down the street. I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's despicable. But we'll let it slide. Uh, so what, what we have here today, I think this is like kind of a monumental crossover because we have two of Barstool's bigger podcasts. Yeah. And uh, you guys have been doing it for quite some time, not only in the podcast space, but specifically at Barstool. So yeah. I'd love for you guys to kind of tell the story of how you wound up at Barstool, how you, you wound was up. telling, you told him about his wrong stuff. That's why I wanted nah, you to tell the story. 
exactly how did that go down, bro? He rolled from Philly and he knew what time it was. He seen, you know what? He just seen us doing our thing. We was bubbling, doing our thing. Uh, it was before the space blew up like it is now, right. which is which is a great because I think it's a medium where people could just you could. It's a space for people to talk about anything. You could talk about movies. You could talk about comic books. You could talk about baseball, basketball, handball, ping pong. It don't matter. It is a space for people to be pocket able to ball. Be, huh? <laughs> Pocket ball? No, that's like a jail sport. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Just, no, we ain't got to put that out there. You snitch it. Now, uh, pocket you know, ball champion. Some people, you do got some pocket ball champions out here. 30 years in Dudes that like to go to Starbucks in little spots, have a hole in their pocket, shake the dice. You need a watch list go, for go, the- go, go, go. I mean, so seven. <laughs> Snake but, but, but the whole twist is, like, uh, it, we came over there, it, you know, and uh, it just- just did our thing. You know, they believed in, they seen something. We had offers from uh, Spotify, talking to the big guys over there at Spotify. And, uh, you know, it was just different. Barstool was a different place. It was a madhouse. It was a bunch of misfits, a yeah. bunch of organized confusion. And it was skinny guys, fat guys. Fat guys, skinny guys. And we just, it just was a good place for people to understand. And they always was open to new ideas and they could see, they had a different eye. You know, it's cool. You know, it's cool to see the, the standard straight up and down person. Mm. But when you can understand, hold up, that person got something. And there's a bunch of people out here that can connect with him. And I know it's an audience for that person. He might don't have an audience now, but it's an audience of misfits out yeah. there, an audience of people out there that could, that like his way of telling about sports. Because I believe, you know, Pat and Gil know, for them being athletes, me, myself, I'm not going to put myself in the game because I'm out. But for them being <laughs> athletes, for them being athletes, they know that, the way ESPN talk about sports is not the way they talk about sports in the barbershop. Oh, uh, no, not way. even close. So so it's like, they want to hear their take. It's, it's a bunch of people that are going to say, man, let me hear what Pat going to say this week. Man, I know he going to be pissed about this shit. Let me hear what Gil going to say this week. Because, and that's a different take. That's why traditional sports television is dying. Oh, man, no, no. Nobody want to hear this shit. Right, uh-uh. And don't nobody like y'all looks neither. Right, guys in suits? No, not, not just suits, but how you wear your suit. Mm. You feel I me? Mean? Baggy ass or, suit. Or how they got you wearing your suit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like, the commutating is like, it's like I'm seeing there's no bull. I'm, I gotta be straight up. And I don't watch it like that, but I might send Gil something. And I'd be like, Gil, uh, I heard you say this. I'm seeing them still, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the, the <laughs> traditional sports. To, I'm seeing them still slang and still game from the podcasters or people that's doing it on the internet. Mm. Cause Gil is just going to rant, just snap on the internet, be mad as shit about Kobe ain't. This stand the third. This person, there, Kobe and Mike. Let me ask you, Kobe, Mike, and, Kobe, Mike. Michael, LeBron, Michael Jordan. All right, what are you talking about? Why everybody always? What's up with Kobe? Like people don't be giving Kobe his props. I thought Kobe. No, Kobe was great. Kobe, Kobe gave Mary mine. So I to me, Kobe was the third greatest player of all time. Probably. It's third good. I mean, one, two, three, all good. Right. But it ain't about like this person just way better than you. No. It's just at different times they control legacies. They control decades. Right. You know what I'm saying? A decade of basketball, high level basketball, winning high level ISO one man basketball. Like a lot of teams can't do that now. Jokic, everybody, he might score 30. This person might have 20. This my person has 16. This person might have yeah. 16. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the, the the points is different. You gotta think back then it's the score 93, 89. Mm -hmm. One person got 40. Mike. <laughs> One what, person got what? 40. Like, another person got nine. Another, Let you, me ask you a question. You now. got a good game, you got nine. Good, 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 good. <laughs> who could play right now? I mean, who playing right now? A five that could play right now and they could play back in the day. When that, before, when, when that shit was hard, it was rough. You might get your jaw broke. Who could play right now? Five players that could play right now and they could be playing back in the day with Barkley and all them, Charles Oakley and all them, going up against Dave Robinson and all that. Who? You, mm. Without the without the rule of the with with the rule old rule how it was back in the day and check tough in. toughly you got to need bigger stronger guards because all that you running free can't nobody touch you all all the way up the court you telling me if I could touch somebody all the way up the court they done that's over like come on they man. done like, you, you would, man it's over with. you done. ain't getting how you gonna get a crossover I got you like you feel we talking about weights now we ain't even talking about basketball we talking about all weight room I'm just stronger than you type of shit you know what I'm saying so like. Without the rule, not a lot. 
Not a lot. And if I'm going, I'm going. I'm putting Braun in there. A lot of people won't, but I am. I'm putting Jokic in there. I'm, I'm putting him in there. Because Arbina Sabonis, he had the guard Shaq. Vladi Divac had the guard Shaq. Yeah, yeah. You talking about the most dominant motherfucker to ever. You feel what I'm saying? Ever, please. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had the guard Shaq. So, like, you can't just forget about it. So, I got to put Jokic in there. Feel me? Obviously, I got to put Embiid in there because because he's big, dominant. Big. He big. Like, he's he just, big, like yeah. you got to name big players. You feel me? Like, to, you know, sustain that. So, But the flopping probably got to put, I would put, I would put Russell Westbrook in there, too. Yeah. The different guard. He's a beast. Different guard. I put Kawhi in there, too. Yeah, because Kawhi is yeah. super strong. Super strong. Like, you got to go strength. Like, like, like that's the type of Like, he, he won the motherfuckers. Like, he, like, robotic. Like, two dribbles. Boom. Ah. Boom. Like, yeah. and it's like, you know I'm going to take these two dribbles and give you a little push. It ain't shit you could do about it. Because I'm yeah. just... Way I'm stronger. Than super it. strong. Like, <laughs> and, and when I push, they ain't calling flopping fouls. Right. Because this shit ain't even going to be a, ah, to get you off me like a little skinny nigga got to do, ah, get off me. No, it's just that, huh, you gone. (sighs) Mike push somebody, they fall. Think about that. What about somebody, they fall. What about the greatest dribbler in NBA history? Is is it Kyrie? I say, from my generation, for what I've seen, because I ain't really guarded Allen Iverson. You know, you you can see it on, on, on YouTube. You can see the way he move, and you can be like, man, you know what? But you don't know unless you up with, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're under, under the barrel. Okay, oh, this is what this motherfucker like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's different. For my era, it's, it's, it's with the ball. With the ball, it's Kyrie. What yeah. about Bob Cousy? I saw him spin around on one knee one time. No, no. And, oh, and he went left going <laughs> right. And he went left going right. Like, <laughs> yeah. right. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't think that could translate to now. To me, it's, it's, it's different kind of handles, though. You know, Kyrie, he'll do some of that sometimes, and you'll still be right there. You was never right there with Iverson. Yeah. That shit was a, a wham. Yeah. You the fuck over there, yeah. out of bounds, and I'm shooting this jumper. In the physical era, too. Like, it was never no, I I got it, I, he didn't have to do all of that. That shit was wham, wham, ha, wham. Yeah. You the fuck over there, and I'm over here. Yeah. And this jump shot gonna be so clean. It ain't gonna be you still there, your hand right here. No, this shit gonna be I'm wide the fuck open. That's why Iverson layups on the big men. It was Way never tough. the guard was never yeah. still in the fucking play. Way tough. It was just Iverson and the big man because I left that nigga the fuck at the three point line when I crossed him over. Wham! Our crossover was so vicious that they said. You can't do that shit. Can't no do more. that shit no more. What are you doing? Change the rules. You just, you just crossed Mike out of motherfucking Jordans. That's selling number one, nigga. You can't do that shit no more. Yeah. That's that gotta be a carry. When they, when you do like this, that you hit Mike, gotta be a carry, man. But Mike, you know Mike. That's who underrated. We talk about people who underrated. That's AI. AI. Super. We, AI changed the whole game. But do that count? Because Mike, you know Mike. Game. Did. Mike Mike sneaks wasn't broke in. You know every game he wore brand new sneaks. Yeah, well Al broke him in that game. <laughs> That's all. Mike know it. Shit, cool it ain't like move. I, I listen. Mike cool the greatest. Cool move too. Come Mike down the greatest. Twin cross again. Twin Mike cross. Mike the greatest. Yeah, but he broke them Jordans the fuck in that <laughs> game. They are shit. You know what Bubba did? Bubba did that shit to everybody. Look how many. Just pull up. Just pull up. Cause I'm a six of fan. I watched every game. Just pull up. How many motherfuckers Allen Iverson made fall? Wait, he did it to Antonio Dan- I'm talking on, the, about on fuck the same play. I crossed you over. He did it no, twice on the same I'm play. talking about you fall on the fucking ground. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was with Bubba's right he in the dirt. Antonio, what was his name? Antonio Dan- twice. Right? Antonio twice on the same play. He, he fell, fell to the ground. Got up. Oh, came back, crossed him again. What are we talking about, yeah, man? That we man. talk about Bubba Chuck, man. We talk about niggas in practice. <laughs> you think I'm practicing with these niggas? That was crazy. I'm already better. Than- so as a Philly guy, let me ask you this. Do you think that they did him a disservice by not surrounding him by better talent in his career? Because you look at who they surrounded him with. Matumbo during his championship run, that was their big move. Mm-hmm. Then they added Glenn Robinson. No, no, no. He was, solid, no, no, he was, no, no, uh, he was solid in the East. Matt Geiger. Matt yeah. <laughs> Come on, that guy. Uh, 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 Aaron Ross, McKee, Montego Cummings, Eric Snow, Eric Snow. <laughs> oh, Tyrone on. Hill, George Tyrone Lynch. Hill. 
George, George Lynch. Lynch. George Lynch was a beast. I'm gonna bro, keep it all the way real. I'm in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. It was at one time I was like, I see Eric Snow out and put some leg warmers on him, man. I was mad as shit at Eric Snow, man. That nigga missed so many fucking 15 foot jump shots. That Mitty, you were right that, to the Mitty. Oh, yeah, that he shit. loved it. He loved it. I, he loved I, it. I, me for me, I like Aaron McKee though. Aaron McKee is a good dude. Yeah. He can, he can but for me, I don't understand this. I don't understand how you could ever make it to the league as a six foot, six foot one, six foot two, six foot three point guard. And you can't shoot from 17 feet. That's just the craziest yeah. shit to me. You ain't gonna make it too far. I, I, shit, Jock Vaughn made it for fucking like 10 years. I'm like, what the fuck is this? He can't throw a rock into the fucking ocean from the beach. How is he still in the <laughs> league? Yeah, real. But then eventually they get Chris Webber for him. But then you hear Chris Webber talk about his time in Philly. It seemed like he was miserable. It seemed like he did not want to be here. Do you think that they did Allen Iverson a disservice with the talent that they surrounded yes, him? Yes, they did. Because we didn't put no talent around him. Out of all the people we named, who else could get you a dub? Just 20 on a regular night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It would have been different. I mean, because I feel like it would have just changed Al the legacy had the so attitude much. attitude he had, man. I ain't practicing with these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> just feeling like he had to do Nigga, it. Nigga, while I'm coming to practice, we know what's going to go down. I'm going to run around tonight. I'm going to get 50. These niggas going to play tough D, and they going to swing me to rock. Man, y'all burning me out at practice, man. <laughs> I got I gotta get 50 tonight for us to win. <laughs> the fuck you mean come to practice, man? Hey. I'd have been the same way. Hey, hey, I was dog and shit though. Yeah. He was, ooh, he was doing for I'm talking about years. You got doing AI hey, scored like eight 40 point games in a row as a rookie. He went on a run at the end of the and season. And he was hurt 40, every game. 47, he was 44, hurt every game. 44, 49. Yeah, he was throwing his body around. Broke he was hand. Throwing broke his body. nose. Uh, all type of stuff. Then AI fell f 42 times a game. Hard body. His body, his body. Yeah, just running like into the lane. Like body. he was playing physical into the lane. Hard yeah, body. man. What Back when he talking about physical, you, you can hand check. Mike was guarding him. What you mean? Mike was guarding him. Kobe was guarding him. Shaq was going to go get that. You talking about Shaq. Right. That's fucking nuts. All right, so I have more questions about the legacy. So I feel like I started listening to you. No, we got they got an answer about the barstool. How do you like working there? Yeah. Oh, so well, that's what I'm. I'm that's uh, why I'm, I'm on barstool. Uh, so, right. so, oh, so I started listening to your podcast probably episode six. By episode fifteen, you guys were fist fighting each other. How important you think it is that me? You, do you ever listen to that episode? No. Nah, <laughs> How important is it that me that that me and Pat get into to a physical altercation for the? It's uh, very important, man. Yeah. Because y'all got it. Let me just tell you something. Bro, fuck you. you like, he did what he did. did. I had to, I had to, I had to ten his shit. I had to black his shit. I had to give him five percent ten on his shit. Because you gotta establish some type of some type of dominance. You know what I mean? Right. You ever watch the the Nat Geo channel? Of course. You see the hyenas. They pick on each other because they gotta discover some type of dominance. The animal, you man. might think you know you could tell Pat what to do one day. Pat might. <laughs> no, 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 no. no I ain't gonna do that wrong. That sounded so loud. <laughs> that so I ain't gonna do that the wrong. I ain't gonna do that wrong. <laughs> tell you, bro. But it helped the show, yeah. though. No, 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 like yeah, because I'll be off that bitch, right? Because because <laughs> after he did what he did, I forgot that the cameras was even on. <laughs> <laughs> they came back at the start of the next episode like a presidential address like we're sorry for whatever happened whatever went on between the two of them. remember them shades he had on <laughs> no it was a hot day it was hot it was hot the sun was bursting through the studio um, but yeah I feel like uh, it's been a crazy long journey and the success has been crazy but then I look at the way that it's progressed with both of these shows at Barstool. And while everybody's on great terms now, you listen back to the Tyrese interview, you could tell that. You go back to the Gillian Wallow knockout fest, you could tell that everybody's on great terms now, but things didn't start off on the best terms. Yeah, and well, I'm talking yeah. about the yeah. Dane Lillard interview. Yeah, I had smoke. I had yeah, smoke. Pat, well, listen, but let me you know, I, I carry my smoke a different way. I don't really. Listen, listen. I bring my smoke until no, I see a motherfucker. It. I don't let really feel. I don't even know. First I was all, offended. I'm going to say all, that. That was the we word. We in Portland, I'm right? We in Portland. I don't even know. I'm not going to bullshit. I don't even know who Pat Bibb is. I don't know. Who How the <laughs> fuck you don't know? Listen, I'm Pat, a, I'm, Pat, kill, Pat, I'm, I'm John Wick. I don't know. I'm I don't who you know, hired listen, for John Wick. I only I'm, watch the finals and I don't be respect, fucking. He really, he really so respect, I'm like, respect, respect. So I'm like, okay, I know certain players. I know uh, uh, LeBron James. Durant. I know LeBron. 
I know Kyrie because they're a pet. I know I know about a good 15, 20 players. I, some of them I know because they do walkthroughs. I know some niggas I never see. I just see them on the NBA walkthroughs because they be having their drip on. So I'm like, okay, dude, with it. I've never seen them play. So I don't know. So this this was so crazy about it. So everything happened. I don't even know who. I don't even know y'all mentioned Pat. I don't even fucking know. So years come by, Pat come to Philly. So I'm at the game. I'm with my nephew. I'm with Mook. We sitting right there in the front row. Yeah. Because the Lakers come. I'm going to say, I'm going to take Neff. Neff, I'm going to take you on the floor. Go yeah. see LeBron, man. Yeah. I don't know. I spent like fucking, I don't know for yeah. them tickets. Just so he can see LeBron. So Brian and them, they all warming up. I'm like, Pat, what's up, baby? You know, because he over there bars you down. He was like, yo. Then he came over. He dabbed me, though. He came over and dabbed me. But I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. I don't even know. I just know he's on Barstool. Yeah. He played for the Lakers. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I don't know nothing about Dame Lillard. Yeah. What the fuck was that? <laughs> None of that. So I'm like, so Pat, I forgot who told you. Sometimes he's like, Pat was a little upset by what you said. I'm like, who? I didn't, what the fuck? What, I don't know. He, what, who, nobody never said nothing about Pat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know him. I didn't even yeah. know what's going on. He's not a rapper. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking yeah. like, and then they broke it down. I said, I knew they was talking about somebody, but I I didn't realize what was going on. I remember the moment though, but I ain't know. Hey, you know, y'all turned y'all turned me up. That turned me up. That shit. turned oh, you see? up. Yeah. See, 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 but listen, see, I wasn't shit like even that. saying it in a disrespectful way. I was just asking, like, okay, when you on your way to the arena and you got you got to play somebody, you feel what I'm saying? Who you like? Because you know, some niggas gonna give you thirty. They might give you forty. Steph might give you forty five tonight. So it's like, I gotta really be on. So when he said Pat, I said, no, Pat, cool, because Pat going to D you up. I did say that. I said, but Pat not going to give you 30. That wasn't disrespectful, I bro. I would, though. That, that wasn't disrespectful. Not, but to me, I looked at it like, oh, they think I'm a nut. They think I'm no, sweet. See, no. No, 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 no. no. Y'all, y'all missing the whole point. I'm looking at it like, how the fuck is he on the show first? Oh, 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 Why the fuck they ain't come get me? I don't even know. I'm t- I'm what you mean? How the fuck see, go the realest show for the culture, you got to come get culture. Me. Yeah, come get me. I'm see, you me. know what's crazy? Do you, I don't I even it. know he looking at it like that. I ain't worried about that shit. Yeah, you see, that's how I think. I fucked up, man. How the fuck they ain't even know I'm like, that. Yeah. So when they, I'm like. I NBA dude, because you know, I watch it. I got homies that watch it. I got homies that locked up that watch it. Like, I got people who watch it. You feel me? So when they hit me, I mean, man, Pat, what they on? That's how my homies hit it to me. Like, man, why you ain't? on there, bro. And that's crazy, because I'm like, I never disrespected Pat Beverly. I'm like, what the fuck? So ever since then, I carried that way. Dang it, Lilla. I know. Nah, they ain't about to get back on this podcast go crazy on me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but- Locking you know, that shit up. But, yeah. but, but uh, yeah. then he say something on the podcast or something, right? You said yeah. something on your podcast, yeah. and that's how we even found out. I'm yeah, like, look, 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 I ain't gonna, see, one thing I do like about Pat Babs. And check my numbers on him, too. I'm telling you, Elite. Pat Babs said this, and it fucked me up. And I didn't understand. I didn't see, I didn't talk to players and then they educated me. No, Pat, I don't give a fuck who in the court. Mike, Mike could come back. Everybody could be in the court. Pat, Pat gonna say, ain't nobody fucking with me in this court. That's Pat. That's me. I never, so I had to understand his mindset and that's the only mindset what, when you gonna be able to win. Right. You gonna be able to stay around in this league. Sure. You can't You can't be holding nobody else fucking trophy for him, cleaning nobody right. trophy. Right. You gotta be like, fuck that trophy. I'm gonna get my own, you ain't yeah. nobody. 16 years. And I think that your mindset is what has played into you being able to have a long career. I don't think if you had that mindset where you like took everything like, okay, put it on the fucking bulletin board, noted that down. Like, I don't think that your career. 16 years. But uh, but it's a long time. It got to be a mindset because if you take one thing away, Pat ain't in the league no more. Uh. If you take his aggressiveness, his hunger, his defense, all defense, bro, is all about effort. Let's be for real. Mm. That shit is all about knowing position. And a will. Yeah, that's it. And effort. Mm. The motherfuckers that play the best defense in the league is only because they the motherfuckers that get the best effort. If you always hear a motherfucker talk about them, they gonna always say, he's high motor. Yeah. Whatever that means. Right. They usually talk like about a white defensive end and say he's high motor as like a way of saying that he's not like athletic or whatever. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But but, but that's what they do. Oh, you know, he, he, you know, he never stops. He always hustles. So... Pat, that's what Pat got. That's his gift. That no, nah, I'm, I'm hungrier than y'all. Mm. Right. Still take it personal. You no, feel what still. I'm saying? Yeah. I'm waking. I'm waking up finding shit. 
They never oh, fuck get, it. I'm it, coming off the bench. Fuck it. I'm right. mad. I gotta go. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. I got I ain't good enough. I gotta be better. I gotta be better. I'm psychotic with this shit, bro. So it was really a gift that you guys gave him to light yeah. the fire That's under him. That was actually yeah. really nice of you guys to say that. that was, and it's forever like that. You gotta give me my flower. Yeah. <laughs> let me just tell you something. Right. <laughs> let me just tell you something. He let me know we're getting going. Yeah. 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 Watch one of the playoffs. Going in on that. Hey, hey, turn up. Like shit. Hey, hey, you know, me that up. nigga said what? <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said what? Yeah, man. I get motivated. Different. Whole time he scored, he looking in the camera. Yeah, he talking yeah. to me. I ain't eat at the game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need a. I don't. Don't pat me on the ass. Yeah. He did yeah, wind yeah. up in Philly, man. Yeah. That is a, a beautiful thing. The way the synergy works, it just kind of all kind of comes together. Guys, let's take a second and talk about Vroom. What you talking about? What is We're talking about Vroom. Ooh, I like that. If you're in the market for a used car but dreading the hassle, on top of wondering if if even buying a quality ride is what's going on, you need to check out Vroom. How I've been, you say it again? Vroom, V-R-O-O-M. Vroom. Vroom. I've okay. been shopping on Vroom.com and they have thousands of cars and trucks to choose from, all of which can be delivered straight to you. I found a few that I really like, but they have every popular make and model, so it's hard to pick a favorite. All vehicles on Vroom.com. What was it again? Vroom.com. Vroom. Go through a thorough inspection and reconditioning process and come with a 90-day limit limited warranty. They even give you seven days or 250 miles, whichever comes first, to make sure that you love your new ride. And if you don't, you can return it. Not only can you buy a car or truck from Vroom. What is it called again? What's Vroom. Vroom. You can sell it or trade it in and you can trade in your old ride too. So all you have to do is provide new details and they'll give you an offer in as few as two minutes. Mm. They'll even come and pick it up for free. Vroom. What is it called again? Vroom. Vroom. Is a better way to buy and sell cars and that's exactly what their customers are saying. Like Timothy who said great cars, great shopping experience, and app, great service all the way through delivery. Check it all out for yourself and find your next ride on vroom.com. What was it called? That's vroom.com. Um, hey, how, how got we, a Philly person Ask the question, man. man. He's scared to ask the question. I'm asking. What? Hey, how we get that bag? What we got to do? How we that, get that, that million bag? dollars worth of game bag, bag. The double That's what I'm talking about. Nah, the nah, one that nah, stretch the shoulders. The truth. <laughs> Or do y'all want me to sugar cook? I want both. This is a little dark room you gotta go in, right? While the one in there. No, no, no. no, no. I ain't going to room pack. No. Pack, you like That's what Cat Williams was talking room. about. I ain't going to room pack. No. I ain't going to room pack. No. no. Hey. I ain't going to room pack. That means that I. No. Hey. hey. Okay, cool. No, I'm just okay. fucking around. <laughs> I ain't going that room no. pack. So listen to you. That, I, don't, I, don't, I no. wasn't near that day. Do y'all not understand what a plate is? <laughs> I don't know that day. I wasn't near that day. Pat, I wasn't, I wasn't there that day, man. Please. Oh, my God, nah, man. Honestly, bro, what happened was, even though the podcast took off fast, <clears throat> it really was 10 years worth of work. Mm. I started Million Hours Worth of Game in 2012 when, when Instagram only had 15-second videos. And I would say... Yo, let me give y'all me and I was worth a game real quick. To all the young niggas out there. I'm all right. uh, I used to watch that shit. Stop chasing bitches and chase money, because when you got money, bitches chase, chase you. you. Right! <laughs> It was like, you used to give niggas motivation every morning. I used right. to wake up every morning. Okay, let me lock in. Let me hit. Right. Because I'm saying some real shit, but I'm saying it in a ghetto way. Whereas though niggas that's from the bottom is like, yo, this nigga crazy as shit, but that's some real shit oh, yeah. though. You feel then, what I'm and saying? And then in 2017, he came out with an album called Million Hours Worth of Game. Right. It's on Apple or iTunes still today. Right. I still got a, I got yeah, an album out called there. Million Hours Worth of Game. Wallow came home in 2017. So imagine all of those videos mm. that I gave away giving the youth game from 2012 all the way up to 2017 when Wallow come home. I'm still doing it. So it was really years of building because for years, my fan base used to say, yo, you need a podcast. Yep. You need a YouTube mm. channel. Yo, you got to get it. I didn't know what a podcast was. I was like, what the fuck is they talking about? <laughs> like, then I'm just keeping it real. I want to watch the podcast. And I was like, shit, boring. Why would anybody watch this shit? I'm confused. What the fuck is going You mean to tell me people watch this shit? Like, mm. this shit is boring. Like, okay, cool. Some time go by. He sent me an article. Read this, cuz. Early in the morning. It was like 7 in the morning. 
I said, all right, where, where you send it to my DM? What you text? It's my text it to you. All right, it's read cool. that and call me back. I click on it. Spotify allocates 421 million to podcasts. In the first quarter. The first quarter of the year. This was April 2019. I said, what? Four. It's like 1.68 billion over the whole year. That's kind of a lot I'm of money. Like, they gave yeah, they went ahead. 421 million dollars to podcasting? What the fuck? Hey. Buy five mics. <laughs> Eight cameras. Let's get to the shit. We got right to work. Our first podcast went to number two in the world. Number four, something like that in the world. Behind Joe Rogan. Mm. That's cold. And the first podcast we ever did. But you see what they did, though, right? You mm. see how it was built. I don't even know if whoever watched, I'm going to give y'all a quick game. It was built on providing a service. Right. Anything you want to be successful at, you have to provide a service. Apple, what they do, provide a service. What do you do? For years, provide service. The service was knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's in order to be successful, that's it. You got to provide a service. And, so, so and when you we, still provide service. Right. So, when we transitioned over to the podcast, it was me and I was worth a game. Got us attention, motivation, and education. You feel what I'm saying? And that's what our, and then all the podcasts that came before us, they based their shit around old niggas. I was like, we gonna base our shit around the youth, man. The owners of tomorrow, man. Fuck them old niggas, man. I don't, <laughs> no disrespect, no, but right. I don't want to right, hear about it, the bends you had 98, right. nigga. Yeah. I don't want to hear about that shit. You come on here and tell a bunch of old motherfucking stories. No, no, no. we going to give these young niggas an no. opportunity. Because I was a nigga that was hated on. I was a nigga that was blackballed. I was a nigga that was shunned. So it was like, nah, I'm going to make sure that when I see a hot young nigga that's coming up, that's doing him, he ain't going to never feel that way. He always going to look at me like, no, nah, they the real OGs. Them niggas the real ones. Real talk. They the real thorough niggas because I ain't trying to compete with you. I'm trying to eat with you. Mm. You got old niggas out here trying to compete with the young niggas. That's That's... That's ass backwards to me, man. That's like, that's hustling backwards, man. How, how you trying to compete with some niggas when you was doing the same shit they was doing 20 years ago? That don't make no sense. Mm. So that mean you hustling backwards because you supposed to be in a whole total different fucking space than these kids. You feel what I'm saying? You not trying to compete with Tyrese Maxey. You trying to level him the fuck up. Now, so, everybody going to tell you you're good, nigga, but shit. When Joel ain't here, nigga, you got to go off, nigga. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear you at an off night, nigga. You got to, you ain't trying to compete with the nigga. You trying to let the nigga know, nigga, it's going to come a time when we going to need you to really do you, nigga. Yeah. It might be the playoffs game seven, nigga. Might be. Where we going to need you. Might be elimination game. Right, right. Where Joel got 19 tonight yeah. and the nigga four for 17 because they triple team in this motherfucker. We might need you to go for 46 tonight. Mm -hmm. So these yeah. is the learning experiences that he's given Tyrese Maxey. That's why Tyrese Maxey, out of all the motherfuckers he ever played with, who he brought up. Think about that. Mm. He played with a lot of motherfuckers. Played with about 36 motherfuckers mm. that then got shifted in and out. And you've been here for like seven months, six months. Yeah. Not even. Not even five months. And think about that, no, because Pat Bear, because these young niggas, one of the motherfuckers that's going to give it to him raw and uncut. Mm. You ain't putting no sugar on it. Everybody else, damn, nah, man, you was off tonight. Fuck that, nigga. You can't afford to be off, nigga. I don't, because I don't got a lot of time left. That's why I told him, you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, look, I don't got a lot of time left in this league. I got to get my shit now, so <laughs> Let's I need to come on. Yeah. So, no so disrespect, about, the, about the bag, though? About the bag? How do we get the bag? A provider service. Oh, provider really? service. Service. Got provider it. service. But you, 16 years in the league? Six, no, 12, 12 years in the league, four overseas. You know, them double. I'm in Russia with it. Yeah. I'm in Russia with it, man. How was it over there? Lit. Lit the fuck up. Yeah. I was the highest paid American over there. Yeah. Damn. I was on the second division team that was on their way to the top division. I'm yeah. like, I'm having my way. Yeah. I had drivers. I got. But you always wanted to get back to the league. Always. Until the moment, you know, I get, I get cut from heat for, for, for some fluky shit. I think Mike Miller, he break thumb in practice. They cut me because I'm the least on the total pole. That's why they got to Jerry Stackhouse. That's how Jerry Stackhouse got to Miami because yeah. I got cut. So I'm like, man, fuck all this NBA shit, man. I'm going to just get my bag <laughs> over. <laughs> What's the worst fuck shit that ever happened to you in the league? I think when it comes to like some medical staffs and bodies, right? You know, some people like 
some teams find some teams find it offensive with you have your own guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some teams find it offensive, like, you know, we want you to work with our guys. But you know, I was in an organization <laughs> where you feel me, like I got hurt all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. Right? I leave that organization, I get older, and I don't get hurt no more. I'm gonna just say that. Maybe it's things, you know, I've could have done better. Mm. Of course, obviously, you know, we all could have been better, but come, you know, that was the most like, man, because I ain't saying, you know, maybe if I'm healthy, maybe instead of that 40 million, maybe I get 60 million. You know what I'm saying? You know how that sound, though? I, I know. I know, but that's the truth. <laughs> it is the truth, but you know how to just think that about that, though. crazy. Yeah. Maybe do that 40, you know. <laughs> I get 60. 40 sounds like a lot. Yeah. 60 also sounds like a lot. Yeah, I know. But I, like you feel me? I, ain't, I ain't trying to compare my bags to no 200. So you hear my numbers. You yeah. feel me? I'm a logical dude. I know how, how this shit go. I know it's a business in it. You know, it's a product. It's going to be another eight years of motherfucker calling himself Mr. 93 Feet. You feel me? Like, I know how this shit go. You mm -hmm. feel me? It's a revolving door. Feet. What's going on? I'm, I'm, oh. They call me Mr. 94 Feet. Uh, uh, I'm just saying it's going to uh, be another Pat Bev. It's going to be another, you feel me? So no, like, why 94? Like, what's going on? That full so court. The basketball the basketball court. Basketball court, man. So he picks you up the oh, entire the way of the court. That's how my game got. I used to play the whole court. Yeah. Get the fuck You out. play a little extra. You play the whole bench, too, I remember. They I call remember you most... Mr. Five Feet. The same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call me Mr. Five Feet. <laughs> I played, I played, you know, I had my time. <clears throat> hey, how, was, how was it competing? Like when y'all was crushing shit, like and still crushing shit at Barstool, competing with those other podcasts and y'all like blowing them out the water and still It is. wasn't really competing because it's like everybody do some different shit. Mm. It's not like we stepping on the court. We in our own world. And, and, and it's like, we, we got to- See, I got to take the competition What we, we did, that. this is what we did. So when we came- and we was doing our thing. We give bars, so we doing our thing. But COVID hit. When COVID hit, everybody panicking. Oh, we scared. We packed our shit up and went on the road. We was like the first boys in this game traveling, doing podcasts. Nobody, mm -hmm. Snoop, where you at? We coming over to we coming over to the studio. What? You we on the plane. We masked up. We going here. We going. We 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 would go get an Airbnb. Like for one time, I remember we got an Airbnb. We got an Airbnb for twenty for like forty eight hours. And in that 48 hours, we got Shaq. We Shaq pulled up. Uh 85 South pulled up. Russ the rapper pulled up. Some Magic City strippers pulled up. And we drove over to the to the studio and got Young Thug all in 48 hours. Mm. So we was just crashing shit. Like, we going, you know what? Two, this, this week we banging out 10 podcasts. We're going to stockpile. So we a stockpile and we be running all over the country. We be in Houston, we be in New York, we be here. Because I realized like a lot of times. People ain't want to come to Philly. It ain't they ain't want to fuck with, but they'd be like, yo, let me let, let, let me get with you. And then it started getting to the point where people would be like, they had just DM us, yo, I want to come on the show tomorrow. When? Tomorrow. I remember Kevin Durant hit me, yo, I'm going to get on the show. I said, when? Tomorrow. We was right up at a spot in Brooklyn. Shop. So it was like, it turned into a place where people seen me and Gil, because initially it was just being Gil. But they was like, yo, man, I want to come kick it with y'all, man. Y'all niggas crazy. It was on that time. And then it just opened up and we just kept going, kept going, kept going. And more people, all the, all the boxers that have, like most people that's doing interviews now, I'm talking about celebrity, like we we basically got them in the game. They was, a lot of these dudes wasn't doing, give, doing mm. no interviews. Doug wasn't doing no interviews. Floyd mm. wasn't doing no interviews. Mike, a lot of these dudes, we got them 21, uh, th like certain people, they was just not doing them like that. Dirk and them, they was like, we ain't doing no interviews. And we just went in the game and we wanted to give people some stuff and different perspective from our point of view and gave dudes a platform where it's though, we not bringing you on here to beat you up. We're not trying to beat you up. We're not trying to ask you about what happened with this kid. We're not asking nothing. Do you here to promote your music, promote your sport, your athleticism and, you know, get, get a, a broader base. But we said to ourselves, like I always tell Gil, because people will be hitting us up because a lot of times when you start in something, if you don't know the direction in your area concentration, or you got lawyers that deal with malpractice, then you got lawyers that's criminal defense attorney, then you got corporate lawyers, mm. you got civil, it's different lawyers. You got to stay in your pocket. So we was a dude that'd be like, somebody had called, yo, man, you know what's the name just came on? We had a thousand keys back in the day. They ain't got nothing to do with us. Oh, what's the No, this is for million dollars worth of game based off a legitimate standpoint. Mm. Where you can give somebody an athlete to this, oh, this dude, he a rapper. He's not on that level. He's not a million dollars worth of game. And they and they dudes like damn, but he rap. I can't disrespect Snoop. I can't disrespect Dirt, Young mm. Thug, Kevin Gates. They're not on their level. This is not. So what we did is we protected what we was building. 
And I think a lot of times people just get a podcast and they just be all over the place. Right. Oh, he could come. He, no, he uh, can't come. Can't, I don't give a fuck right. who he know. Can't have Mark Cuban and come around half. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah. And, and that's where people mess their joint up because it's like, well, I'm coming. If I'm coming to you to get million dollars worth of game, they got to be million dollar motherfuckers. Mm. You see what I'm saying? You can't have Floyd on here talking about how he's on the joint with eight watch on and, and all these other dudes. And now you got Boo Boo because he, he, right. he, you know his aunt and he mm. rap. Man, he's that's six and oh as a professional. He's six no. and this, this is not a. This, we, we knew that we wasn't a launch pad, but what we did do was in the beginning, a million dollars worth of game. For years, we had a joint called the Song of the Week, where up and coming artists, we would put the song on there, even though we'd get flagged and even though we'd get demonetized, and there'd be a lot of time. A lot of these beginning joints, they got the money off the YouTube. We wasn't worrying about that because we was worrying about advertising deals. But a lot of young artists, some of our classic materials. Their music on our YouTube, they made the money off of that. Because, you know, that was our way to get uh, back at the beginning uh, to say, all right, you can't get on here, but we're going to get this song here. Might get some light on this episode to help you get some more traction. So, no, you guys have always been giving back. Even the, your business segment that you have in the middle of every yeah, episode. Yeah, the game on that. You make sure you're always highlighting businesses. Yeah. But uh, one thing I want to talk about with you guys. Oh, y'all is, locked in. Yeah, that's I ain't going to lie. That's impressive to see y'all work too, bro. Yeah. Especially for so long too. Because, yeah, you know, us, when you know, you get something good, People drop the ball, yeah. but it's very no, few. You see, you know, I, you know I, I see it. Because one thing about me and Cuz, if I'm out of pocket, he gonna check me, and if and he out of pocket, I'm gonna check him. Mm. But it's not checking is a form of correction. Mm. It ain't no damn you. Some it have been times we didn't have moments where he be like, we be on the plane. Cuz, listen, I be like, damn, you right, Cuz. I will snap out, and the next thing you know, locked in. I'm running because mm. we got different parts to play. I look at Cuz like Cuz been in the game so long. He put so much work in. I be like, listen, I. Go ahead, chill, cuz. I'm gonna run around this country, get do the head of meetings, get the connects, do what I need to do. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go get this fucking money. I'm gonna come back and figure it out for us. And, and I'm gonna be the one up nights on, on, on fucking reading contracts. I'm gonna be the one reading spread to articles and say, listen, we maybe we could partner with so and so, or maybe we could do this, or maybe we could do that. Like, if you look at different things we do, it, it's, it's ideas that we might sit there and come up with. Like, Gillian Wallow knockout party, that. We don't have no space to be able to do that because you got different people that might do these little celebrity joints. That's not this. This is from the love of boxing from Gil and the relationships that we have with the boxing world. Mm. Top rank, uh, 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 PBC. And be PBC. And just not just the boxers, but also the boxing organizations, the promoters. They fucked with us because of cuz. You see what I'm saying? So it's like Gillian Wallow knockout party. Okay, we. you know what? Cuz, like, you know what? His fantasy of being, he, he was a he was a a, a wash up boxer. He never made it in a boxing. But his fantasy of being, <laughs> hey, his, man, fantasy, say, yo, man. his fantasy, <laughs> his fantasy of being in the game was like, cuz, we sitting in the joint, smoking his weed. We talking. I said, yo, we gotta do our own stuff. You know, I just he said, you know what? We're gonna do a boxing joint. Kept smoking. Yeah, we're gonna we gonna be boxing promoters. I said, what the fuck is you talking about? Man, I don't he said, cuz, I'm telling you, man. We, we got the best, most entertaining motherfuckers on the planet, people mm. that want to fight. Mm. Black folks want to fight, but they don't have a place. Let's create that place. You know? So if dudes got beef, did it. Hold on, I was hitting the weed. He was. <sighs> <laughs> so how do you see both of your guys' roles in the in the show? So, like, what's, what's your role? What's your role? Uh, what's, what, what, how do you- He's do you, just a nut. He's a fucking nut. <laughs> yeah. He's a loser. Like, he just get on my nerves. You need that. Chilling. No, that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He be, he be, he be, he be, what's the name? Uh, he be tripping. But I, one more thing I want to say. Go ahead. Uh, it's, it's bigger than the podcast. It's bigger. See, we're, we're not a, we're not a podcast. We're a media company. Hmm. Um, you got, you got, you got, if you look, you got Gilly on sports. You got Wallow on the streets. Where's Wallow? You got uh, Gilly Fest. The only festival where you pay $75 to get 15 big time artists in the fight. Nobody doing no shit like that. It's going to get even bigger this year hmm. because what we try to do is utilize our, you know, we got friends, people that deal with us. Come on, man. This is not, we're not going to try to kill the people. That's one thing we're not going to do. We never going to kill the people. You know what I mean? Pay-per-view was $20 to get into the, for the knockout party. What's the name? $75. And you got the baby, Finesse Two Times, Meek Mills. I'm talking about, then we give you surprise people that you don't even know right. come. And then we gave you the fight. Came. We had 15 artists there. They came and we had Meek Mill and the baby come out on surprise. Nobody mm. doing that. And then when everybody came out, we showed the fight there on the big screen where you got to pay per person that's in the building. 
We had to so pay. So y'all paid seventy five dollars to get in here, but we had to pay like twenty dollars per person for you niggas to watch the fight. <laughs> we, but 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 it's about it's about the experience of our right. people because we got because when you home and when you home and you watch a million dollars worth of game, and you from Milwaukee, you from Philly, you from Jersey, you from Baltimore, you from California, we appreciate you. This is our way of showing you our appreciate, appreciation and saying, listen, man, we fuck with you. Come fuck with us. Come smoke some bad weed. We get, you know what I mean? Fuck out of here, man. I don't smoke no bad You did a couple of times. I caught fuck you slipping. Man, I caught you slipping. I did. I caught it one time in Atlanta. He was mad I had shit. nothing. Man. Had the, he was mad, too. I had the three tote that motherfucker, man. <laughs> shit was dirt in the whiskey. You hear me? <laughs> but the bottom line is, know what you're doing. And know your area of concentration. Don't just sit there with a microphone with your homie and talk a bunch of meaningless shit mm. and chase clicks. That is not you're not building the business. Then you just a nigga that's trying to go viral, and and you don't you you, you just oh we gonna just sit here and talk like Gilly. Nah 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 nah. Talking about Nick. What is you talking about? Right. You know. So you know you got to just figure out your lane and stick to it. Can we talk about your birthday party? Oh my god, he was fucked. I didn't want to have a pearl. He know I don't like bar birthday parties. You, but he never you been celebrated. No, no, no. So. He did. No, no. He did some. <laughs> I threw your presents away. I didn't even look at them. All right. So this is what happened with the presents. <sighs> Gilly texted me saying that the, there's a birthday party. I called Gilly. I said, what should I get for Wallow? He said, get him some fruity shit. I was like, what? He said, get him some fruity shit. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, like a dildo or something? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him a dildo. <laughs> I went to the fucking sex shop in New York. I walked into the sex shop and I got a, a duffel, like a, a shopping bag full of shit. Furry, ha furry handcuffs, yeah. vibrating cock ring. You got a bunch of words. Penis water gun. No, listen, so listen. And the Black Beauty 24-inch double-ended dildo. They wrapped that shit up like a baguette and I put it on my know, bike I handle. Look at it. I, I put it on my bike it. handle. That's what I did. As soon as I see it. He talking about that ring guy over uh, room guy. That <laughs> <laughs> joint was special. I used the joint last night. <laughs> you lying. I put it on my bike handle. I, I bike my I bike, bike home. I put I bike home over the I biked home over the uh, Manhattan Bridge. It was swinging in the wind halfway across the bridge. The bag ripped through. Dildos all this over the fucking crazy, bridge. Man. I had to gather the shit up. You told me, uh, I said, what time is the party? You said, uh, I think nine o'clock sharp. Sharp, you said. So at 8.59, <laughs> I walked into the building. There wasn't a soul in there, dude, except for me with my tote bag and a baguette but sticking Gil out the top of it. I ain't know. Yeah. Gil was like, said it up because I didn't listen. I was pissed. I said, listen, man. Gil whole thing was nigga. He, he remember I was telling a story on the show and I was talking about one year that I forgot my birthday. I didn't, I was in jail. So yeah, I forgot my birthday until it was mail time around three o'clock with my grandma and I got all these cards and stuff. And I was like, damn, I forgot. And I told the old head, I was like, yo, man, he said, man, that shit happened all the time, old time in jail. So I was tell so Gil knew I never had a party since I've been home. I was just like, I don't give a fuck about parties. He's like, no, fuck that. I'm throwing your party, Ocean Prime. That's just, I'm going to throw a party. And it was like, all right, fuck it. And it was a great. He was. It was. It was his party. He was drunk at anybody in there. It was incredible. But I, of it. Bro, I, I showed. But I showed up solo with the with the with the whole bag, and I really barely didn't know anybody. I felt like I was at a at like a high school dance, just like trying to strike up conversations was, with people. There was some chicks in there, though. It was a lot of them. Yeah, I'm happily married, but uh, that, uh, but man. but so I was. <laughs> I'm dangling with this bag, and I've really just milled around for like two and a half hours. Like, when are we opening presents? I know. I, oh, I took it all with me. I'm glad I took that shit with me. I, I left it on the table. Oh, so you like, got it. I think no, I'm talking about I threw it away, but I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you know, I took it all with me. You heard him. No, you got him, Pat. Pat, you caught him, Pat. What's your present? Pat, you caught him. Did you use the cock ring? I just never got it. Thank you, you, know, look, look, they know. <laughs> look, look at my producers. They know. They like, he definitely used it. Nah, I was chilling. And he used a double edged sword. Fuck out of here. Fuck the Black Beauty. The Black Beauty. All right, guys. Let's take a second and talk about New Amsterdam vodka. You know that if Gilly and Wallow are in the building, they're going to want some New Amsterdam vodka because New Amsterdam vodka is the official vodka of not only the Pat Bev pod, not only million dollars worth of game, but all of Barstool Sports. Mm, New Amsterdam vodka. Clean, pure, 
crisp. For the holidays, for birthdays, right. for, for bringing in a new year. It's better than a birthday card. It is. It's, it's better than a birthday present. It's better than a stocky stuffer. Yeah, yes. It's better than a chocolate. Why milk. give wine when you can give New Amsterdam vodka? I mean, I don't even think about the W word. All I think about is the V word. <laughs> it's vodka. New but it'll Amsterdam. have you feeling a little bit of room because this New Amsterdam vodka <laughs> is absolutely fantastic. Born from an uncompromising for great vodka. Anybody who's into finding their wins is into New Amsterdam vodka. That I promise you from the bottom of my heart. I'm drinking a New Amsterdam Mule pretty much any time I want to unwind. And that's why New Amsterdam Vodka is the official bar- vodka of Barstool Sports. Find your wins today with New Amsterdam Vodka. <sighs> Who do you think the top three basketball players are? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, that's easy. LeBron. LeBron. Uh, LeBron is a... F- See, they're going to be mad at me. I be knowing, but I don't, I don't count, so they can't be mad at me. LeBron from the rip. I just seen him slam doing some somebody the other day. Uh, what's my Paul man? Paul George. He dunked With the three George. names. He's a he's an animal. Carl Anthony Towns. No. Shea Gildas Alexander. He's a beast. I seen him play. I, I was I randomly watched somewhere. I was somewhere in the game. I was like, damn, who that? Yeah, he, he different. You know what I mean? I asked for the record of the team, so it wasn't. So that would have been my team. And I and my man, we won. We won like when did we win? Like a year ago. What's my man? Jokic. Milwaukee. Giannis. Nah. That's my guy. So no Mike, no Cole? No, you said right now. No, no, no. I said all, I said all the time. Oh, all the time. My man, I, listen, if I got to pick Mike. You better not say no fucking devil of shrimp, bitch. No, Dennis Rodman. That's my oh, man. You know, come oh. on. We had the symbol of games. Yeah. Uh, both pinch your asses while they're going up for, <laughs> for the rebound. The wedding dress. I would say. Uh, you better not say no fucking showing. No, I got to take. No, that was my players. Can I do I got I gotta to stick to the rules of what I'm saying? What no, you get to, the player. greatest players of all time, if you ask me, because they say my games is patting them, Dennis Rodman, Sean Kemp. So I told you he's gonna say Sean, Sean Kemp. Kemp was my and is it pick is it mixed between Ray Allen and Bill Lambeer? Okay. I'm just saying my style is a little For different. Sure. <laughs> that nigga said yeah, I, we got fast forward. Bill had a rough his yeah. day he was rough. Hey, no, we got Bill fast was, Bill was rough. Man. No, we Go gotta ahead. fast forward it. No, I wanna know Gilly's starting five rappers. So five. No, no, rappers let him answer like the basketball, basketball first. Basketball, basketball first. players. Top three. Top ever. Three. Ever. Top three ever is it gotta be Mike, LeBron, Kobe. Or you could put Mike, LeBron, Kareem. Or you could put Mike, LeBron, Will. Or you could put Mike LeBron. No Shaq. Shaq? Yeah, we said that at the same, same time. time. Yeah. You know, because I'm going to keep it all the way real. Out of every player that I ever seen play since I was a kid, it was only one person that I ever seen in college. And I was like, you know he's winning the championship in the NBA. That was Shaq. Shaq was at LSU. You, that motherfucker was dunking. They made a movie about people, him. man. They made an actual blue movie. Chips? About, yeah, blue chips. Right, like you, you knew you was like, yeah. he gonna win a championship uh, in the NBA. He's winning at least one. You, you knew it. Like no other player did you ever feel I, that I ever feel like that's that. true. Like I, I, that's true. Like, that's true. Like when LeBron was coming out of high school, you was like, I wonder if he gonna be good. He probably gonna be good. You you didn't know because he was eighteen years old. But you didn't know he was going to win a championship. Like even Tim Duncan, when he was, you was like, you didn't know he was going to win a championship. You didn't know David Robinson. You didn't know. No, you watch Sha- Shaq play in college. You like, dog. He just he just dunked on six people, bro. Yeah. He dunked on f- five players on the other team and, and one of his team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I asked Bobby Jackson about it because you know he played Sacramento Kings versus Lakers. Bobby Jackson played for Minnesota. That was my team back in the day. So I say, Bobby Jack, Coach Jack, how was Shaq? He pat it's like it's nothing you like nothing you can do. You can double team, you can front him, you can send a double team, you can nothing. It was nothing you could do. And see, Shaq was the best type of big man because honestly, this is reality. Ninety percent of big men. Be soft as shit. That just be their nature. They just be laid back. They be. Oh, Shaq nice. was the big man who knew he was the big, big man, man and acted like man, everybody knew he was like, the big you man. Stop playing. I slap the shit yeah. out of you. He say, man, he came in an interview. The man came in an interview. He, man, Shaq, uh, she killing it. What's going on? He feel know how I play. Kobe know how I play. Give me the ball. Watch me dunk it. I, no, damn. he ain't see it. 
Phil Napoli. <laughs> Call me Napoli. You got to do the eye, right, too. <laughs> Give me the ball, let me dunk. <laughs> that's it. Like, that's what? And you literally just, you know, just throw it to him. Like, dunk. Like, you got to understand. Dunk. If, you got to understand. If Shaq shot foul shots good, he would average 55 points For a game, real. man. No lie. No lie. They put a whole, they couldn't stop Shaq so Shaq. bad that they put a whole a rule. fucking rule in. Hack a, rule a Shaq. In. A rule in. You could just hack a motherfucker just for no reason. Just as soon as they pass the ball and they shit foul Shaq for no reason. He would have 60. If he would have went like 80%, not even like 90. If he would have right. went like 78%, he would have averaged 53 points a game. Yes, he would have. How about rappers though? Starting five rappers. Of all time? Starting five rappers that could hoop. No, no, no. First question. All time. Starting you. five rappers of all time is we right? just, it's no order, right? We just had this conversation in the locker room. I want to see how the, the I generation have to compare. Jay Z, Wayne, Drake, Biggie, Tupac, mm. Mm. DMX. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, Tupac. It was real hard to pick between them two because both of them is legends, but they both strong. You know what I mean? And a lot of times when they mention people Pac, they never mention DMX. That should be a That's his that, guy. That should be important. DMX, Tupac. Biggie. Jay-Z and Nas. What do you think? I'm going. No order, right? Biggie, Pop, Jay Z. Future. Damn, I was going to put Pluto. Pluto's. I got to go, Wayne. Damn. Gotta go, Wayne. Drizzy, my homie, though. And Drizzy, cold. I just, you feel me? I just, I feel future's pain a lot more than a lot of people. That's and all. what's so crazy is I, I I don't really, I'm like, like I don't bang Drake like that, like that, but I, I acknowledge his greatness. Uh, he's elite. You know what I mean? He's I elite. acknowledge that. That motherfucker ran the game for a yeah, long still. time, bro. I don't think nobody's ran the game this long. Yeah, he cold. I'm talking, we talking like early 2000s, man. 20, damn near 20 years at, at this 2023, point. It's 2023, man. 24, actually. 2024, damn. <laughs> I say future, he's in there because he don't have a lot of features. You know what I'm saying? I judge people. Well, you feel me? Futures. I, I, I mean, just, it's just all the opinion of who you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I see, but you know, the problem is, great. the problem is, when we say this, we don't. We got to do errors because initially people are always gonna go back. Uh, and it's and it's and, and I and I was talking to B Dot about this because I was supposed to do like a the top fifty hip hop joints, and I told B Dot my list was a little different. I said we if we gonna do a hip hop list, we gotta exclude all the dudes back in the day. That should over with. Mm. We can't keep doing the list. Well, every when does back in the day start? Right, back in the day question. starts the nineties. The nineties. We, right. we can't. Have so we gotta Tupac, go for the two thousand. Okay. Jay Z. We can't have Biggie. We okay. can't. Not, we can't have none of them. If you just okay. go for the two thousands, who the top five then? Yeah, okay. Future Pluto from the rip. I'm yeah. saying Pluto. Okay, future, Drake. Drake. All right. Future Drake. Wayne. Oh yeah. But no, Wayne was yeah, Wayne, Wayne, so Wayne, Wayne was holding him there. Yeah. Wayne, Wayne okay. was yes. the, Wayne came. Damn, but it still look crazy because how you don't put You gotta put Wayne and Jay Z. Damn, in the it's like Wayne. Right. Wayne and all it's hard. How you can't That's why I say Wayne. That's yeah, why I, can't I have to do leave Drizzy out because Wayne. He can't do it. If you go in the new if you go in the two thousands. Meek Mill am I. Wayne wasn't in the 2000s. He he started in the 90s. Yeah. That's cool. He's a goat. He's he's goaded. He's with Hov and them niggas. Drake, Future, me. Oh, yeah. Put it up. Them niggas are already in the Hall of Fame. Hall they can't of fame. be spoke right. about no more. Right. Right. So, so nobody got, that rapped in the 90s, period, can no. be on this list. So you got, so you got, nah, not if you so you got Drizzy. You got Future. Definitely. You got, for me, I got Meek. Yeah, I got Meek. For me, I, I got, got baby. He bring that whole vibe. I got baby too. I got Dirk. Yeah. The reason is we got to be mindful when we say in certain places, future brung a sound. And I had somebody language. else, but I ain't gonna say his name. 
So Future. shit popped off with him. Uh-huh. Right, Future. Future. Some, I, he was on my list too because his flow was crazy, Future. man. Free Young Future. Thug. Future. Man. Uh, that, Future, that, had a, Future had a sound. Future had a sound from Atlanta beats. And then when you you seeing these different people, we got to put Chicago in there because they came and they influenced the world with the slang. People took their whole language and their whole identity. We talking about big cities. I don't want to mention those cities. Right. All of them. Took their language, their Everybody slang, say back door. Their gang everybody, everybody talk that. They was powerful. So when you talk yes. about affluence, you might got to throw Chief, Chief Keith in Keith there. Chief in there, absolutely. He was powerful. Absolutely. Because he birthed a whole, you know what I mean? So it's like- it's, You think Chicago is more influential than Atlanta? Definitely, for me, you definitely got to put Thug in there. That's the then you got you can't forget Memphis, but Somebody, you can't forget little baby. It's too many. It's too. I can't. It's talk too many, about. man. It's, Dolph, you got. Oh, it's, it's some good. Ooh, recipe. Kanye. Dolph, no one said Kanye. Cole Kendrick. No Kanye in a different name. Oh, you got to put him in his ear right there. Oh, oh my goodness, I can't. My I forgot Kanye, Kanye is in this joint. We I think apologize. Because you put apologize. Kanye in over here already, but apologize. he might be going. He but we ain't even. We weren't even thinking like that. We I weren't apologize. even thinking. But like that. still, he might be. Even in my top motherfucking yeah, rapper list, I apologize. I'm taking wall. somebody out of there and putting Kanye in. I'm tripping. Yeah, uh, motherfucker. No one mentioned NF or Eminem. Eminem, yeah. No, you don't fuck with him. No, I was me personally, oh, just me being a, a kid that grew up from the streets. You know, I respected him. And he never listened to did, rap, rap. I never listened to. I never listened. Rap, I, I listened rap. to rap, rap. I know. I know. I used to watch him as a shorty. Used to go off on um, Cassie and all of them. Never, he don't was, listen to rap. He don't never, know like. And you was calling people out from, and I was always one. I'm like, man, ain't nobody touching him, t- tapping chin. None I'm of that. I'm the only one that did that. Fuck None out of it. <laughs> Nah, for real. For but, a long but honestly, time. Honestly, though, Pat, I don't start nothing, bro. Anytime you ever see me, anytime, a nigga play with me first, man. I don't start nothing. Ever, man. That ain't even in my nature to start nothing. Uh-huh. But back then, I just wasn't turning nothing down. No, nah, no, nah, you wasn't ducking no smoke. I wasn't you turning whoa, whoa, nothing whoa, whoa, down. Hold on, hold on. There ain't no king of Philly here. Hold on. The, I'm the king. <laughs> because, hey, because, love it. Love it. Because... You can't say you're the king of something. Nobody don't acknowledge you as that. It's videos. Mm. But not just that. What made Gil so It's prominent. videos it, it, of Meek Mill saying, yeah, I'm about to, I got the king of Philly with me. It's videos of Beanie Siegel saying, yeah, I'm with the king of Philly. It's videos of Freeway saying, I'm with the king of Philly. It's videos. When you call yourself a king, it got to be because you for the people. Who helped everybody get to the radio? Mm. And he did a song with everybody first. He when he was popping, he when did you a song with anybody. Any everybody. nigga in Philadelphia, artists in our time, how they got on the radio? Ninety percent of them is gonna say Gilly. That's impressive. Got me to the radio. Impressive because Gilly was one of the only sick niggas who was secure with himself. He wasn't operating off of ego out here. I don't give a fuck about your shine. See, most motherfuckers give a fuck about a nigga getting some shine because they worrying about you outshining me. That was never my, no, bro, you got talent. This DJ is my man. I'm going to put you on. Yo, mm-hmm. this nigga hot, dog. He, he y'all get together. He listen to your shit. He like your shit. No, that's cold. So when I say I'm the king, it's for a lot of different reasons. It ain't just for no, no rap shit because let's be for real. It's only... Two motherfuckers out here who, before they had any type of deal, they had kids falling the fuck out. That was me and Meek Mills. Mm. Before any deal, before any labels knew, before we come out the house, the kids going crazy. Ah, Gally! So that's... I knew he had something. That's when I first put him in the studio. So so at the end of the day... I was his first manager. It was all of me. You know the fuck he was. I ain't First of all, this is my little hey, cousin. Who put you in the studio? Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is my little cousin. Who put you in the studio? I, 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 I used to watch this nigga in the tub. Who put you in the studio? I got you now. Who was managing your career? I got you. Say less. Who put you in the studio? Say less. I got you. Go lie? He was all. I got you. Go lie. I was your first manager. No, he wasn't. Fuck out of here. All right. Fuck out of here. All right. 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 It was a setup. What you mean? Was a okay. Setup? Hold on. What you mean? It's a setup. It's, all right. I was played basketball, right? During my freshman year in college. He went to a bump college. I come home. 
I had an apartment off of campus. Tell him what right. college you went to. Cabrini, nigga. That's, a, D, that's a DZ uh, car. Uh, right, listen, he hated it. Listen, right? <laughs> Fuck. A I come home. I do what I do. Take care of my bills, whatever. Go back to the school. But I, so I had a homie. He had some equipment in his room. We just used to smoke weed, turn equipment on, and bullshit. So I say whatever come to mind. He had a microphone. One day, he like, yo, we going to write something. We going to come back and record it. We wrote something. We came back. I was the first one to go. When I rapped, they never went. <laughs> it was like, dog, nigga, you don't, you don't, dog, that shit nice. Dog, you fucking hot. I'm like, dog, y'all niggas ain't tripping, man. I ain't no fucking rapper, man. Fuck type time y'all on, man. Y'all on some dumb I seen, shit. I seen some of So now, this is towards the end of the year. So now we get out of school, we go home, bam. When I get to home, I see this nut ass nigga. It's him and 68 niggas outside. They rapping. They all in the so, so I'm just listening this at first. rapping was cool. Right. Most of the motherfuckers wasn't rapping, though. It was a crowd listening to him and a bunch of other niggas rapping. So I come home, I walk up, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? So I'm just listening. So, you know, hey, they going in. So after a while, I said, man, I got something. So it was like, ah, because I'm not known for rapping. So it was right. like. But then when I started spitting that shit, my shit was the best shit out there. I'm gonna say this though. I you will say, say this. you gonna say this? My one Watch rap this. was Watch the this. best shit I'm gonna say he this. ever I'm heard. I'm gonna say this. Ask him. Ask and him. And I will let anybody shit. know this. I will let anybody know this. I am the founder of Philly Fly Nigga Rap. Not no rap rap. Me and Gil was the first niggas talking that. We put that shit on. We get these bitches, you get out of the line, we gonna pop you, but we ain't we ain't with all that. Cause cause if we pop you, we fucking up this money that we get. All right. But we put that shit on, we fuck niggas wasn't rapping like that in Philly. We was the first dudes, major figures was the first dudes to go in the joint and talk about playing football in Moschino, Versace Bombers, and niggas wasn't even rapping that way. No. You had Tommy Hill, you had uh uh Ram Squad in them, but they was rapping a different way. They was rapping about some other shit, rapping, rapping. We was the dudes talking about putting that shit on. Getting at them chicks, um, and if you got to get crazy, we don't want it to go there. But, but uh, shoot you till you catch you on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So we were the first. <laughs> we ain't Doctor Smoke. Yeah. No smoke. But I was the first. <laughs> but, but I had to do so. So when I so when I do so when I hit my rap out there, that's when I discovered you. He talk about yo, cuz yo, that shit hot. I don't rap, dog. Start the dumb shit. I don't rap, dog. To the no, we. Had, so next now, day I had him in the studio. No, so now no you did, nigga. It was a few days after that. So now he wanna <laughs> he wanna make up fake places for us to go to. Bro, let's ride up here real quick. Whole time we going to see rappers and shit. We will go here, cousin hot nigga. He only got one rap, but you know how crazy that sound the niggas. I was he, a manager. You taking him a off? nigga to rappers talk about this nigga hot. Nigga, he only got one rap. I'm like, and I'm sitting there arguing. I ain't no fucking rapper, man. Stop this shit. You no. Know, <laughs> I'm his Spit manager. that shit. Spit hey. that shit. Then I, st all right, man. I rap that shit, and the nigga sit there like, I can't fuck with this nigga. That's when I was like, literally, hey, bro. You gotta understand, managing. bro. You gotta understand, bro. Hey, that's cold. Bro, he I didn't was, even know. Bro, that's cold. He I was know. the hottest nigga in the city. No, listen, I was in Chicago and I was a little kid and, and knew about you. What are you talking no, about? No, this before no, then. But this, this before, before the internet. This, this before, before the internet. internet. We talking about 95. Oh, I was the oh, hottest nigga. Yeah, okay, 1995. Yeah, I was the hottest right. nigga in the managing? city. I had like nine raps. <laughs> and then I took you to the studio and changed your life. Literally, I had nine raps. Like literally, the like the fourth song I ever did. Went the number one on the Power 99 on the countdown. Bro, I went to the studio. I didn't even know how to make a real oh, song. Oh, take it the, back to when I took This it. nigga, he take me to the studio. He knew I was the hottest rapper, so he always wanted to do the hook. I'm going to do the hook. You go ahead and bless him with the bars. So he 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 won't go right. I knew the game. Hey, you been locked in for a no, long no, time. No, he twist, been locked the in. The whole twist man. is this. This the whole hey, twist. Hey, you be locked in. This the whole twist. <laughs> he be These locked. niggas don't know how to play the part yeah. so we can win. You be locked in. No, this in. the whole part. When we went to the studio, I didn't even know if I could write another hot verse. I believed in him. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I believed in him. I I'm the reason y'all know about him, because of me. Yo, I was just a slick talking nigga. I always had this to talk on, the slickest shit in the hood. I didn't even know if I could write another verse. Like, 
Then he go in and do the hook. We them boss niggas. We do boss things. Like rocking icy rings. And <laughs> go ahead, sing your hook. Sing. I want to hear it. I want to hear your first verse, and I want to hear what it sounded like when no, you were on the corner. I don't remember my first verse. I remember my... No, my, that was a verse. You killed it. Them once for them once. That, yeah, see, he know my verse better you know, than me. Go ahead, go ahead, rap my shit. No, no, so I was, this was 96. Go ahead, rap my shit. What did he say? Rap, I don't I'm remember that shit. This was 96. Like, I'm Mike. 96. 96. <laughs> Go and rap my shit. Let them know I what I was talking that. about in 96. I remember how it started, though, cuz. We them boss niggas. I remember that. We, I was like, we them boss niggas because we do boss things. They rocking icy chains and fat ass diamond rings. And Gil just came in there and just went ballistic. I wasn't, my whole thing was just like, I'm just trying to make a great song. You know what I mean? I, he was my artist at the time. And I'm like, man. <laughs> the fuck out of Nigga, I had you in, put you in the studio, man. Then he I got took you booked. to Peanut. He got booked fast. Oh, we shit. had like five, six songs. I was getting a lot of stuff done. I said, we're going to be major figures. I, I put a lot of stuff together. But the whole twist was, one thing about me, Pat, I ain't. The reason I win, if I see something that you know how to do, nigga, I'm not trying to emulate you. I'm going to amplify you. Mm. Bet. You do that, I'm going to do this. And we're going to figure that shit out. So I never was no hater. So I said this. He he was talking, man. I play ball. I said no, nigga. You you hot. So you can play ball, but one of these Jones gonna catch. That's that's that was my whole thing. I wasn't like, with that shit. Man. I'm like this rap shit. We run around. We he did not believe in robberies. He did I'm not like, believe in this shit. <laughs> man, this shit ain't man, fuck I'm like, cause listen, listen, listen. Now listen. <laughs> he, he'll tell you this. Let's get some money, nigga. He'll tell you this. We'll be running up in, nigga. Listen, he say I ain't all with that. that shit, man. He say all that. Did he like, bring me Master P? I said, you gotta understand, this is like ninety. I said, this nigga getting money. But listen, this nigga getting money. Getting money, cause he put that shit in that nigga there. That was bullshit. I'm showing him this nigga was getting independent money. I'm already up on this shit in 95. I got the rap pages this magazine like you showing him like you. Shit, man. <laughs> but I'm see, sure. I wasn't up on you guys understand. I didn't grow up. Listen, dog, I never had cable TV growing up. I never seen no rap videos ever in my life. I played basketball and we stole earrings. And then when you graduated, you did armed robberies if you right. was from Erie Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's how we grew up. The bitches nigga from the hood done took something from somebody before. <laughs> That's how we grew up. <laughs> I never had cable TV. I never knew none of the rappers. I never went through the rap phases. Oh, now they, they just backpack rap. Oh, now we didn't know if that shit came on the radio. I like that shit. I listened to it. I had one CD in my motherfucking life. Motherfucking two CDs, I ain't gonna lie. Somebody bought me. You have vanilla ice. Shut up, nigga. Shut the fuck up. Somebody bought me that. You had a vanilla ice. I, I ain't purchased that though, but I had niggas for life. I'm a motherfucking nigga with an attitude. You know I, I let the good die young, so it makes me young and bad. Putting ass whippings on the niggas that never had. Mm. I can sing that shit word for and word. Hold up, hold up. We used to ride around in Cousin Nessie car. Yes. And we listened to two albums. We used and, I, and we was battling. We used to listen to me. I represent a reasonable doubt, and he represent it was written. I told this nigga. Back then, JT was going to be big. And I told him, I said, I kept telling him, every time Master P, I said, yo, this nigga, he the one. He, man, this nigga. I said, listen, I'm, re I'm reading this shit. This nigga is making money. He's making, he's in Richmond, California, doing independent. I said, because if we get up on this shit early, we in the fucking game. He kept saying, man, this rap shit. I said, no, rappers make more money than street niggas. I was telling him this back then. I said, we going to own our shit. I'm talking about the masters. I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading. Uh, uh, this business of music. I'm reading all this shit. I'm like, all go, oh, that dumb shit. I was we gonna, hit, we gonna like, have this many points. He like, no. Oh. I said, man, fuck this shit. We gonna get out of here. And he, he man, just, I'm trying to go take some money so we go down Missouri, man, and buy some motherfucking. It was a spot's name. Missouri, no shit, man. Missouri, it's a Versace shit. Missouri was a spot. If you was, if you, if it was here back then, you'd have been getting all your fly shit from there. Yeah, yeah Versace, Mosquito. Yeah, yeah, this back, man. this back when it was called Gianni Versace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we uh -huh. was where wearing. Guys that I was his man. Yeah, yeah. Where you going? The Versace now. I was his manager. Back then was Gianni. I'm the reason. Thank me for him. Get the fuck out of here. You went to jail. I'll put you on the map though. You didn't believe in rap. I didn't. I put. I, I listen. I burnt you. I but had that you wasn't no management. You didn't pay for that. And I, and you stole the tapes that you gave the niggas. You didn't pay for that. It nothing. don't matter. I had you at. We black made parties. a song. Listen, because he was a legendary thief. I'm just gonna keep it real. He was a legendary <laughs> thief before all of this. <laughs> before all. Before any of this, just know it is history. Say legendary He's thief, a man. legendary thief. Booster. Oh, what the low lives? You never heard of the low lives? Get you anything you want. What? 
Wilo, Doug Low, Jug Low, PM I'm call, Low, I'm, listen, Midge I'm calling a nigga Low. I took him to. These niggas blitz the gallery. They steal guest jeans and polo <laughs> shirts. Nigga, this nigga lived with a bag that had aluminum foil wrapped on the inside. He'd watch go this, in the store, this. dump everything in the bag, and walk out. Then the alarm don't go off because the up. bag lays with aluminum <laughs> foil. Hold up, hold up. This nut. Who the watch this? What's up, dog? Hey, nut, how you doing, man? I'm great. Now, I just need to know one thing. In 1995, when I first brought Gil to the studio, to your studio, 2020, was I or was I not his manager? We 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 all was together. Yeah, don't you do no, no lying, I, nigga. You know was I, I can't give you my though. fucking head, <laughs> Don't you do no lying, Peter. Yeah. You what? You, you knew you had already been coming through, so you knew. I had to go. You find. knew what we had to do. You knew to, that I had that twenty five dollars an hour <laughs> and go from there. I was. Just, you know what I mean, that was back in the day. A quarter. Yeah, a quarter an hour. Nine That's five. a lot, though. Nine back five. In the you day. do you remember the time when I played Master P and Gil laughed at me? I remember that. <laughs> and they said, take, turn that shit off. <laughs> I mean, all right, now I'm going to call you, man. I'm doing this interview. So I'm just saying, and he, he probably don't remember the management part. Man, but peanut. I paid. I, you know why I was your manager? I paid that twenty five. No, you didn't, bro. I did too. Every we time broke I paid that down. No, we didn't. You yes, didn't know to did. break it down. You wasn't in those studios before me, nigga. I was taking you to real live studios just before this. And at that time, I knew Rug. I'm the only. I'm the first boy that knew Rug. You did. I didn't know no rappers. I knew Rug. This I back before no any of these boys knew Rug was man. I, I was a hype man back in the day for this rap. All the raggedy. That's how y'all be watching boxing. Who y'all got? Haney or um. Fonte. It's, it's a good fight. It's I think it's fight. a good but, but somebody say they fought already. And y'all yeah. probably the only people to get, no, get that they, information. They sparred already. They sparred twice. One time Tank supposedly got over, and then the second time Devin Haney supposedly got right. over. They was younger though. Yeah, they was younger though. But I think it's a great fight. I think it's something that need to happen. I think it's good for boxing. I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think Tank mm. is uh shorter, but uh Got more power. I think uh, Devin Haney's taller and uh, probably got a better jab. So it's, it's a 50-50 fight. You know what I mean? I, I want to see that one. I want to see it too. I want to see I like that both of them. Both of them is, is good folks too. Yeah, man. I want to see that one. Can can I I both a, on and it would be too. a lot of money involved in it too, man. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. Y'all been fighting since y'all was kids. The bottom line is to fight through, you could get to this point to where as though now when you fight, you reap all the benefits from it, win, lose, or draw. Mm. So, Gil, when you had that uh, Rick Ross situation, that was maybe my favorite rant of all time. That was completely off the top of the head, or did was that premeditated? Did you go in the lab a little bit, have a little no, bit? Not really premeditated with me. You know, I just I mean? wonder why everybody you beef with you, later, you be cool with everybody. Everybody be cool with you because they did some dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> when when you do some dumb shit, then it's like, my bad, bro. Right. Uh -huh. You feel what I'm saying? Ross was in somebody comments commenting some shit about me. Called me a fraud. Think about that. And it, you know, and it started from a situation that I really initiated because Gil, <laughs> no, straight up, real no, talk. It's not even about no bad stuff. Gil, Gil, we was in Jackson State. This before anybody was up on Dion like that. This when we was Jackson State, our guy Dion Sanders. So we in there. So Gil in the other room, I, he back there with the, with the players because he, he always with the players. I be in there talking shit with Dion. So I come back in the joint after the game. Everybody hi, bye. I walk back. I said, oh, shit. Is that is that Lil Wayne right there? I peep Lil Weezy. It's the first time he's seeing a nigga. I ain't going front. Fan mode. You know what I mean? Because this is Lil Wayne. So I go back. I said, yo, come on, cuz. Nigga Weezy, you know that nigga. We got to go holler at Weezy. We got to give you, we got to, I want to holler at Weezy plus. Let's get this nigga on the show. So I go back and get him. Get him like, all right, cool. Because it ain't no problems. Mac Main there, anything. We walk up. I'm like, bet this nigga Wayne, man. I'm like, because my whole thing is, we about bringing shit together. So I always want the people to see. So I'm like, I got to get these, get them two together. You know what I mean? We're going to talk so we get Weezy on the show. Get a fl flick the whole energy. Mm, wow. So when it happened, we kicking, we was like, what's up, Gil? What's up? And you know, when he when he said what's up to Gil, I seen the connection that they had through some brotherhood. You can see. He was like, what's up, man? It was like, it wasn't no corny shit. They ain't seen each other in years. So I'm like, bet, we gotta get him on there. So 
Gil, Gil go, I'm like, Gil was, he was there for a minute. Wayne was there. And then. No, I walked in, but he was talking to Prime. Prime. So I walked in just so he could see me. And it was, it was a love. What's up? You know, I want to let you know I'm here. Ain't no tension. What's up? No dumb shit. What's up? Uh, all right. I turn around and walk out, but I'm right here outside the room. Because we like, we like, no, we got to get him. All right, where Mac Main at? Right. They holler at Mac Main. I'm like, Mac, he like, come on, we can talk. I'm like, Mac, let's get this joint. You know me, boom, boom, boom. No, I'm talking about, listen, when I say no dumb shit, no dumb shit.com. We just want some, I'm on some legitimate shit. Like, let's, let's get it. So whatever happened, he leave, whatever. So Gil telling the story on like, what was the girl you was talking to? I think she was like, uh, yes, Raquel. Man. Raquel. So he, TMZ, he, TMZ, he talking to her about it. He's like, yeah, we seen Wayne, but he left. He shot out. We, Cause Wayne left. He had somebody to go. Wasn't Gil didn't say it on the tip. Like he seen him and dipped and none of the crazy shit. So somebody tried to show a video of like Wayne leaving out Gil right there. Like, no. And then that's when somebody said it was Cap. And I'm like, hold up. So, cause somebody put that up. Like Gil was saying, Gil was just saying, we seen Wayne and he dipped out. He bounced. So we couldn't really get it, you know what I mean? Right. right. And, and that the was fact it. of the matter is, we sitting there talking to, to Mac Main. Mac right. Main. And Mac even was like, right. Mac where said, where go at? Mac said, where Wayne? They like, Wayne left. He like, he left? Yeah. What you mean he left? They sitting there like, mm, yeah, he had something to do, he, whatever. He rolled out. Whatever, whatever so the case. Mac like, all right, yo, I'm going to holler at y'all, man. Right. And he had to hurry up and dip to find out where. Yeah. So I wasn't saying it like I seen, because it wasn't no beef. So when you somebody put it up, ain't no drama, it up, ain't no uh, Instagram, like it was something. Yeah. And then people was commenting. And that's how media is, though. And then people was commenting. Strong. And my whole thing is like this. I don't care what nobody do. But one thing I'm never going to do, Pat, if I got a problem with you, I got a problem with you. Uh -huh. And I'm never going to try to... Like I put a post at one time. I said, be thankful when people go at you or go at the people you love online. Because what it do is expose the secret haters. Pay attention to the likes and the comments. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm not a dude. I'm not no internet dude. I'm not going to never disrespect nobody on the internet because I'm always keeping the consideration who they got kids, they got family. That's mm. just me. Wow. I ain't, and I ain't got time for that shit. I mean, I, I mean, I'm in the game to get money. I ain't in the game. To go, it's like the streets. You're not in the game for the violence. And you got to get your paper, take care of your family. So it was certain people. There was other people that had some slick shit to say. And certain dudes got in, got in, in mind his business. And so Gil, he'd be like, and it's a lot of things that he see, I see, I'd be like, cuz, chill, fuck it, don't worry about it. Mm. Well, he'd be like, you right, you right. Because yeah, be like, he save a lot of you niggas, I'd be like, yo, chill, <laughs> chill, cuz. He save a lot of you niggas. <laughs> because it don't, because it don't matter. Because we be seeing people doing a slut. A person to hate through somebody save else. a lot of you yeah. niggas. Because I don't fuck with nobody. Yeah, he don't fuck I with nobody. I wake up every day, I go to the studio, I get my motherfucking business, and I smoke my weed. And niggas want to play with me, man. And niggas, be niggas play with you that won't play with you in your face. You won't dare disrespect me in my motherfucking face. Say none of that shit you niggas say on the internet, nigga. Won't even half you niggas wouldn't do none of no shit like that. None of you niggas wouldn't do no shit like that, man. Because all I'm going to scream out is Allahu Akbar and whatever come after that nigga, come after that nigga. <laughs> but, Fuck wrong with but, you, but, man. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to switch it because he got some. He got, no, he got a list. No, because I'm going to be lucky because I'm about to go yet. busy on these niggas not right, right now. here. Not right don't now. get me fucking worked up. <laughs> not right now, cuz. Fucking cowards, man. Cuz, not right now. Don't even don't do it. Don't, don't, not right now. See that for another time. But what I'm saying is like, it was it was just, like I will say, he be somewhere behind his fucking business, man. Right, now, don't fuck with nobody. Don't fuck with nobody. I'm a God-fan mm -hmm. person. So when you fuck with me, all I'm going to do is pray on it and tell God you fuck with me. So whatever come to you, nigga, come to you, nigga. Yeah. Fuck wrong with yeah. you, man. Niggas out here playing games, trying to get likes and shit, talking about niggas for no motherfucking reason, man. When Pussy face niggas at that. But we know how this shit go. Yeah. But when you're pissed off, you do float, though. You say some shit, you're like, ah, she's with me because what happened to me? Just not because I busted her with the feet. I, I didn't bother her. I caught it, bro. That, yeah. Just the entire time. It just sounded so nice when he talked when he said it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. It's no, like man. healthy when you're pissed it's off because you float. Man. We live in a day. <laughs> We live like, like prime example. When Pat got hot with me, I couldn't really, because I'm like, I didn't disrespect Pat. And if if he took it that way, I apologize because I wasn't intending to disrespect you. These niggas just get on the internet and just say anything about anybody with no facts, no nothing. Just they just just say anything about anybody. That's why. The one part that I definitely felt that that nigga Cat Williams said is, you can't let no motherfucking liars describe their own stories. Rearrange the motherfucking truth. 
what's really going on out here. Now, all that other shit, I ain't got nothing to do with. When he said that, I felt that shit. Because you got a bunch of motherfuckers out here that can that, that they make their own narrative up. And they'll keep that shit going, man. Until you, until you kill them, niggas. See, one thing about me, any nigga that ever played with me, think about this. After I jump on their ass, they never play with me again. Ever again. Since I was, that shit since be I was so shorty. embarrassing. Since that I was shit be shorty. so embarrassing and so humiliating. Next that day you, you see video of y'all walking down the street together. Like, right. That shit funny as hell. Right, because, because <laughs> the, the one thing that'll always expose a motherfucker, you ain't real. If you woke up this morning and you disrespected a nigga that you absolutely never met in your life, yeah, you a sucker-ass yeah, nigga, that ain't man. Solid. That ain't so solid. I already know I got the up on yeah, you. Straight up. Because you a fucking sucker. Mm. How could you ever disrespect somebody that you don't fucking know? Mm. That don't make no sense. How could you ever disrespect a man that you never met? How could you ever disrespect a man's child that got murdered out here in these streets? You already a mm. pussy, man. Oh, you already showed your hand. So I already know I got the up on you. So I already know 10 times out of 10 when I see you and you look in my motherfucking eyes, you're going to tap out. Yeah, yeah. Hesitate, for sure. That is honestly one of the things that pisses me off the most. That uh, I mean, rest in peace, f first and foremost, to your son, man. That's fucking... Uh, but when I see people online talking about like... Uh, and I wouldn't even mention it if it wasn't getting thousands of likes. People are like... See the fucking Illuminati sacrifice. The Illuminati. That that honestly makes me my, like makes my blood boil that they would use a right. situation like that. That's like Type so of tragic. This is y'all sitting around talking about the, the Illuminati sacrifice and all that dumbass shit online. What Jay Z say? You get so good, they wish the devil on you. Yeah, fucking nut ass. Yeah, that makes me. It literally makes me so pissed off because it's just so disrespectful. The Illuminati came down North Philly and killed my son. Shut the fuck up. Goofy ass niggas. Positivity it, and love. Yeah, I mean, it discredits your success on top of it. Not only is it fucking like, it's like you couldn't that be successful if it weren't for this. Got brothers and sisters and shit, they gotta see that shit. Mm. Gotta see some dumb shit like that online. Cause you niggas trying to get views and likes. Well, that's how I be though. Sad, but that's how I be though. Niggas is sad. Mm, sad, sad. That's niggas. Be. Get right behind. Ta 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 ta. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. It's wild. But one day, Logo gonna lighten up. I'm gonna tear y'all ass up. I'm gonna light y'all the fuck up. I'm gonna give you all the fame you looking for. <laughs> Trust me. One day, you're gonna be like, cuz I had enough. Go ahead and get them niggas. <laughs> what Cause, can Because to be honest, anytime I get a motherfucker, he told me to get them. I'm talking about next episode, I see him I've walked down the street cameras. Like, yeah, yeah, thank cool. I'm right. I, no, say, he, I say this shit fucking still, man. He feel like <laughs> and Philly still. He, if he had enough, he feel like, cuz I'll never tell you to do no bullshit. But if he had enough, get your ass, cuz. <laughs> Fuck him. Riding down get the him. street, pulling up on people. Like, this man, wow, man. As a shorty, day, I used to watch that on Twitter. One day he's gonna have enough. He gonna get enough. He gonna one of them videos gonna come across, be like, what? He gonna watch like three minutes of that shit. He gonna call me. You know what, cuz? I protect him from everything. Like a lot of times, I never tell him something. So he would say something to me. Be like, yo, man, I see. I see, yeah, cuz I know about that two months yeah, ago. Yeah, I seen I that six months, months ago. What, nigga, because what? Because I gotta keep him focused. Like on certain I shit. Tell because you, be I like, know you, cuz. I'm one of them dudes like this. I'm one of them dudes like this. You only respond up mm. or right here. You don't respond down. No, right. Because I'm not, I'm not putting no light on you. Because a lot of dudes, we live in a culture now where a lot of dudes, they just do anything on the internet. And they trying to get the attention of a real winner. Mm. Like we fucking big time winners, man. Like we serious winners out here. So it'd be like, nah, they're not even worth the acknowledgement. You don't even see that shit or acknowledge them. So they can even try to think that they on your level. They even for you to even be speaking on them. Mm. Cause you speaking on somebody is marketing. That's a million dollars worth of marketing. So we gotta be, you know what I mean? We gotta be uh, real wise in how we utilize our satellites that reach out to the world. So, you know what I mean? That's why I just be like, no, nah, cuz please don't. I mean, he save a lot of niggas. I mean, that's how it be. What do you do to uh, to cut loose? Because I feel like you don't really drink, smoke, watch Jerk sports. <laughs> Is that true? Any of no, I'm practicing I'm about, to go, I'm about to go to the crib, let one out, cuz. I'm practicing celibacy. Oh, you know, you going to jerk off? You going to tell a nigga that, man? Yeah, what's wrong with that? It's, no, I'll just be chilling. life. Everybody does it, cuz. You know? like, 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 a lot of times, I'll just be chilling. Like, he be, 
He'd call me, I'd be like, yo, I'm, he'd be like, what's up, man? He'd have got chill. locked up three times this month for sexual assault on itself. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's only like the eight, I'll just be man. chilling, though, man. I'm practicing celibacy right now. I'm on a journey. It's cars wow. and shit. That's your, that's your advice? Cars? Why would he practice celibacy? He was locked up for 20 years. <laughs> no, because I'm practicing. Unless he had discipline. something in there. Damn. Hey, Ron told me that. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> Unless he it's had a little something in there. No, I was getting ass in there, man. I don't need no ass on the streets, man. I got my paper to look at. I couldn't man, believe I it, paper, man. man. This dude tripping. I couldn't believe it. Remember, I looked at name you. was Kevin the Style, you know. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Hey, remember, I, remember I asked you about it? Yeah, he, Pat, he, he didn't know that you had the whole situation. Uh, yeah, man. And, uh, I say, no, nah, I say he's solid. Yeah. Solid. That's that's tough, yeah, man. Yeah. I said he stood on his head and did a whole dub, dude. <laughs> yeah. But no, we appreciate y'all coming head. through, man. I like that. No, no, no. Uh, but no, we do appreciate it. I mean, honestly, this is the kind of conversation that we could that could go on forever and ever. And I think that's really just a testament to uh, both of you guys. Please. Hey, I never think I had y'all on my show, bro. Y'all gotta oh, think. I what? I feel like little kid feel too. I'm gonna be, I'm a real. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. yeah. tell the truth. Now, yeah. now, before we leave, I need to know something important. Cause you said something. You said ain't no place like Philly. Why is that? Okay, so before I sign here, right? You go around. You ask players like, what you think? What you think? Draymond Green. First thing he say, man, I love, I love Philly for you because they go appreciate what you do. Like every team you go to, and you feel me? They see, you know, they see what you do some nights. You feel me? They see what you do on what they post on media, but to, like to be up close and personal and see it in Philly, what you do, they go appreciate you, bro. And man, it's been like it's been crazy. I think I have, I have five points. You swear, like the love I get here, I average 30. But my impact on the game is 30-something. Hey, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't know how. What the fuck? But soon as he and that motherfucker, this bitch lit. We know everything will be all right. Yeah, they soon as he gonna, ah! I mean, yeah, it's gonna crazy. Start some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah going to start some shit. Like, man, Philly, Philly is great. Love it. Philly loves some I love shit. the city, that's, that's, man. Philly loves some dumb shit, right. man. I love the city. I could be right. myself. I yeah. could be myself, Like bro. we, Like, a perfect story. We... Reason why we fell in love with Deshaun Jackson from the gate when we drafted him. We drafted him, and he, his first interview, they say, how you feel getting drafted to the Eagles? You know, you get to learn behind Reggie Brown. And that nigga looked at the camera and said, what? I ain't come here to be no backer. <laughs> oh, we love this nigga. Yeah. We love <laughs> because that wasn't what he was supposed to say. Yeah. He's supposed to be a system guy. Well, you know, I just want to come in and learn from <laughs> the vets and all that dumb ass shit. And that man said, what? I ain't claiming to be no damn backup, man. What y'all talking about, man? I ain't, me the ball, watch me I'm work. learning on the fly. For real. It, love we Philly. love that, man. I love Philly, bro. We love that confidence, man. I've only been here four months. Think about that. You got to think, I'm talking about like I play places, man. Lakers, LA, back home. I love going to work. Love going to work. Like it, every day for like it's 80 degrees. You getting like, a chip this year? Y'all getting us a chip? Yeah, we got a chance. Cause listen, you got a shot for me. We got a chance. For the Sixers to be my team. Hey, I'm still picking That's teams. the best reason to do it. I have Wallow on your team. You got a chance. I'll be down got a chance. Crying in anything. We, you think we gonna make some more moves? <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Shit, so you think we gonna make some more moves? I mean, you got to, right? Right, you gotta put yourself in a position to be the most competitive team and not only the NBA and in, in the East, you can't. That this year with Max, he can't just let that go to waste. Can't let Embiid go to waste. Nurse ain't having that shit. He want to win at a high level. So you got to make the team better. You mm -hmm. feel me? That's just how I go with any team. Because you were saying you like how the pecking order is right now. I love how the pecking order is right now. I do. We tough. You, we tougher than a lot you of, you know. see, you see, you definitely see the impact when Embiid don't play. When in B play, everything is smooth. Everything's a lot easier for everybody. When he don't play, you see the impact. impact. Yeah. So you probably do need another star just in case that one game injury come up in the, the playoffs and you know how it goes. Yeah. Well, I think well, Wallow's still a free agent. They could probably get you on like a 10 day contract I, I, or something. I, I, I feel I'm, like I'm, you could give I, him you know, a I, run. I could get uh, some ice water. Yeah. <laughs> I want get, get in a raid. Cause, cause, the, cause the, the water that they getting in between, yeah, it's like not really the there. town, all that stuff play a really good part. And if he going to score thirty, all they need the body armor. Different. Really, the nigga, the nigga handed me some Gatorade. Ain't never depend on my motherfucking jumper, man. I don't know what <laughs> no, the I'm fuck you talking about. The nigga, the towel, nigga is depending on where nigga hand you the towel. It's just that whether that you plays a lot. This builds up the morale, the team. You hear that shit, Pat? I am. You know what I mean, nigga I, handing you Gatorade ever. <laughs> 
Because my ACL is still tender. I can't get on the court. <laughs> Pat just went crazy, though, for like 28 or something. Yeah, yeah that's why, yeah, you feel Pat me? Snapped, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, he thought I was playing. In Boston. Look, snapped out without him. But look, he snapped out that but night. Look, you, know, you can tell us one of them games, though. It's the Gator. Was like, ain't nobody playing. Ain't no going the fuck up. Hey, I'm look, running. I'm running. Hey, look, so you got to think. crazy. Somebody got to shoot that shit. So, look, you got to think it's TV game. I, mean, no, I can't have my homies back home looking at me crazy. My yeah. mama text me talking about I done shamed her. No, I can't have none of that. <laughs> you went in there and snapped. I, mean, I had to go go crazy. Fuck it. You got to shoot all my bullets. What the fuck? That's what, <laughs> what you mean? I can't leave this motherfucker. How many all bullets you got? Bullets. No, I got three left. But you bitch ass New York. Nah, uh, uh-uh. I gotta let them all ride. Fuck he that. He went crazy. He went crazy. We lost though. That's the only thing, yeah, the man. It's the only thing. We man. almost pulled it out of the <laughs> yeah. but we lost. Mm. But no, nah, we appreciate y'all coming appreciate through. Appreciate y'all having us. Anytime we're doing that podcast. Hey, that's crazy. Hey, hey, that's crazy. Hey, I got y'all here. That's wild. Wow. Room. <laughs> <laughs> room nasty. Yeah. <laughs> kinky room. Hey, kinky room. Let me know what you need for your next birthday, bro. I got it. I'm not having room. Room love rimmers. <laughs> Much love, no, appreciate you, real, bro. Appreciate Let's get this picture, y'all. Sure. Let's get the picture. Yo, bro. when you when you when you're balling on some free time, call me, man. <laughs> Let me come ball with y'all. Man. You like my height too. Yes, yes. Let's you get this. You know, know my height. You fine too, man. Fuck out of here. Somebody, your height. You fine too. Well, I got six four wingspan.